Hello, everyone, and welcome to Medhead Osnet Podcast, Season 3, Episode 9, live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and now Telegram. Telegram. We're on Telegram, so go follow us. Just search for Medhead Osnet. I don't know. We're giving it a shot. See what happens. what happens. Uh, it's Thursday, December 15th, 2022. I'm your host, Vic Aslanian, and as always, I'm joined by my amazing, talented co-host, Mr. Mike Balian where we discuss our great army in history, covering different eras, topics, and people. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joining us live tonight. Uh, if you are watching us on YouTube, uh, hit that like button, uh, share, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. In order to be in the chat, you have to be subscribed. Uh, if you're on Facebook, please like and share with your family and friends. Um, our returning guest is Hamlet Narcisian, sitting right here mm -hmm. with us. Uh, today's topic is why the Mongols and Seljuks are important to know about in the history yeah. of Armenia. It's going to be a great topic. We're going to dive really deep into it. First of all, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for inviting me. How are you? I'm excellent. Good, good. He's always got a smile on his face. That's how you got to be. Yeah, I mean, if I had this much knowledge, I'd have a smile on my face too. Happy to be alive. <laughs> there you go. Um, well, before we start, announcement. Yeah. All right. That's so, always. um, first of all, those of you who follow us on, uh, Instagram and Facebook, you guys saw that we announced our newest sculpture, which oh, is okay. the great Karagin Nejde. Um, and it's, uh, it's an amazing piece. I mean, we, we went back and forth how to do this the right way. Uh, we wanted to represent that iconic picture of his and yet tie it in with the struggle of Sunik and uh, I think, and, and the response has been great. Orders, the pre-orders have been coming in. Thank you to everybody really? who is um, pre-ordering it. Uh, so if you are interested, go to medhedosnet.com, uh, go ahead and order it and use promo code HOLIDAYS, uh, only in capital letters, and you get 20% off. And this is through everything uh, throughout the, uh, the store. We have the new hats in, so uh, make sure you guys get those hats. I should have worn yeah, it. Rock and promote it, but I didn't. It's okay. It's okay. They know what it looks like. Yeah um so yeah and and uh to those of us uh, we had some people who were confused these are pre-orders guys we are ramping yeah. up production we're hoping to start shipping these by end of uh, january. january so uh please be patient uh, i know some people want to gift it but unfortunately it takes time for each yeah. piece to be made yeah. so uh second i want to announce that uh, a lot of you know her uh, elena semergian is joining the medherosnet podcast as a special correspondent and we'll be covering our armenian uh amazing i should say armenian women throughout our history she will join us once a month in the studio to have a discussion um thank you to elena to, for basically agreeing to do this uh, we're excited to have yeah. her join our team um, our first episode with her will be uh in january next yep. month so uh, it's going to be great. Um, there's a lot of amazing historical women we need to uh, talk about. And um, me and Mike, you know, sat and talk about, you know, doing this when we have a lot of, you know, great information about uh, these, these women. But we just felt like it should be told from a woman's a, a standpoint. Woman's standpoint. Yeah. And, and Elena is an amazing uh, young woman who has so much passion and love for Armenia, our history. And, a lot of and she too. is very knowledgeable. Yeah. So... Uh, you guys will see her in the first show and we'll welcome her on her, on the first episode with her. Um, third, the big news. Uh, now you guys all know that we've been talking about, uh, this great book by Angela, uh, Terian, which is a uh, history of the land of Ararat. It's in Armenian. And, um, if you guys remember, uh, we had Anna who's actually joining us, uh, here with us. She took on this amazing task to actually translate this book. She flew all the way to Armenia, met with Angela and got her permission. And so uh, she sent us an email today who, and she said, it's done, it's ready. So it's gonna go into uh, production and uh, it should take about six months or so. It'll be ready to go. Uh, and when it's ready, we will uh, definitely inform everybody how to purchase this book. Everybody needs to buy this book. Uh, it, it's a mandate. <laughs> it's a mandate. As an Armenian, you need to own it. You need to read it. Your children need to read it. And our plan is to get this into sc Armenian schools 
um, uh, public libraries and even, you know, uh, with, with non-Armenians, they need to read this. It's very yeah. important. So, um, Anna, thank you so much for doing thank this. You, you're, you're amazing. I know you're with us right now in the chat. So, um, hats off to you and we look forward to, uh, promoting this book and getting it going. So that's it for announcements. That's Anything it. you want to mention? No, 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 nothing. How you doing? I'm, I'm good. Busy, it's been, man. It's been a couple busy. of weeks since yeah. we've, we've, since we've sat here. Huh? It has been very busy. Uh, we took a couple of weeks off because we just could not, uh, right. our schedules. Yeah. yeah. It's been it's, really crazy. It's so. nuts. This and time of the year is really We're nuts. thankful that, uh, you know, Hamlet was able to work his schedule and be yes. here today. So we're going to be talking about the Seljuks and the Mongols. And the reason we wanted to do this is because of there's a lot of similarities with these two cultures, let's say. And um, and should I call it the hatred towards Armenians or the resentment? Or, uh, resentment? I will try to give you my opinion yeah. as we go. Yeah. Okay. Because it's, so, it's all of the above, but none of the above, actually. Okay. It's okay. Mixture. So, so what, what we wanted to do is for our audience, uh, our listeners, uh, to kind of uh, understand what these cultures are about and how similar they are and how they affected Armenians throughout history mm -hmm. when they conquered our lands. So, um, let's start with the Seljuks. Is that fair to say? Let's that the best way to do it before we start i am very happy to hear that angela's book is being translated into english yeah, and uh, yeah. will be um, uh, spread out as you said to the schools and everyone else because yeah. uh, she is a very good talented historian i have read her armenian books and i, I feel very good about it every time i hear that one of the armenian um, historians books are being printed and translated um, moreover it is a moment of happiness for me we know it, we know it in Armenian, but we have to translate yeah. and give it to the English speaking world. Of yeah. course. Now, uh, if we, in the event we want to understand who we are and where all, all our troubles are coming from, yeah, then we will start looking around. When you look around, you see that all our troubles are coming from all over the place. I mean, from four sides east and east, west, west and north, north and south, south. Yeah. and then you ask yourself a question why yeah because you're standing right there in the middle of the tra uh, intersection under the, the traffic light and everyone is coming and going over you mm -hmm. and then you have the best quality of the genes you have the good um, natural resources very rich an excellent location for agriculture and for travel and you have beautiful people and very smart uh, generation after generation and talented people and uh, yeah. naturally the conquerors want everything that I mentioned they want all of that they want your genes they want your land they want your money they want your kids they want your talent and then the answer is very obvious they're gonna have to come and get it so this is what's been uh, going on for thousands of years yeah, yeah. so when the so-called uh, Aryan race uh, exploded about 10, 15,000 years ago, and they moved out east to India, west to, uh, let's say, Italian, today's Italian uh, Tuscany, and then to so-called Greece, and mm -hmm. uh, to Basque territory, and all the way to Scandinavia. So these people have been moving out, and uh, historians of um, a very, very high quality, English uh, and Scottish historians, have proven beyond shadow of doubt that all this so-called Aryan white race originated from the territory today that we call it Armenian Highland mm -hmm. yeah. and today they call it Turkey but a name doesn't mean much no. uh, it it was called uh, before somewhere uh, something else today it's called something else sure. and tomorrow it may change its name again yeah. but uh, the, we have to understand that original Aryan white race originated from today's Asia Minor mm -hmm. and spread out all the way to India and uh, why I mention India is because their Sanskrit their old uh, tongue is just a variation uh, of our old Armenian uh, dialect. Yeah. Uh, our Grappar, if you go beyond Grappar, Huryakan Lezu, you know, or, or Heteri Lezu, and you go into that sphere, and then you look at the uh, India's Sanskrit and all that, they are very similar languages, very yeah. close. Yeah. So it tells you that Sumerian language or, or so-called Urartian language, they are all originating from the same location. Now, when we spread out, we did our job 
God said, oh, multiply and go conquer the world. Okay, we did that. Fine. And then all of a sudden we have the best location on planet Earth and everybody wants to get it. Forget about the, from the beginning. Prime oh, real estate. Yeah, yeah. prime real estate. Yeah. Prime. It's like Trump Tower of Fifth Avenue, right? Yeah. So we have covered, uh, we have to put aside for a moment all our relationship between uh, Armenian, Syrians, uh, Semitic people, or, or a Roman Empire, or the Egyptians, or Het, uh, yeah. Hyksos and uh, Egypt's relationship. All of that we can put aside because every every uh, relation is different subject of different conversation and it will take hours one subject alone yeah so your question is about Seljuks and mongols that yeah. we are going to concentrate concentrate, concentrate on, on those that two, two. only yeah yeah so i brought you from uh, far away to be able to giving context uh, give you an uh, understanding of where we are mm -hmm. and why they are there yeah so in old times, in very ancient times, according to the best uh, linguist that I've read about, uh, that are all European, by the way, Armenians have very little uh, books about that. Mm -hmm. This civilization that we have now consists of several uh, races, the white, the African, the yellow, uh, Edgar Casey calls them yellow race. Mm -hmm that Asian, mm -hmm. the uh, red, so-called Indian, mm -hmm. and uh, there is supposedly another race that got melted away somewhere, somehow, during the history. So we were talking... What color were they? <laughs> I have heard different things, brown, this and that, some color people. But in our <clears throat> conversation, the most important thing right now we have to concentrate and talk about is the yellow race. Mm -hmm. So according to Edgar Casey, the yellow race was created by so-called gods i don't know who they were although i know but i don't want to talk when about you say them. yellow race you're talking about the asian mongol yeah. mongol yeah. Yeah. country okay yeah. southeast asia asia asian race yeah. so okay. they were originally according to edgar case they were uh, created in the uh, gobi desert which is in yeah, mongolia. mongolia mongolia yeah so the, uh, we're talking about 10 20 000 years ago maybe more maybe thirty thousand years ago because they multiplied so they were basically um, shepherds mm -hmm. and uh, not much of um, intelligence uh, at that time and they were uh, at the same intelligence level all the way until 10th 11th centuries so what happened is they multiplied when they multiplied they started looking south but believe it or not the chinese people who call themselves china is after a, 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 a kingdom of chi something so they were also uh, originating of the Asian race, mm -hmm. but their history went a different direction. Direction, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Chinese got kind of uh, concentrated on their mountains, just like the Armenians did. Yeah. And they were fighting among each other, the, the kingdoms and uh, kings and yeah. or whoever. Factions, fa different factions. fractions. Yeah, yeah they were yeah. Kicking, uh, fighting each other. But eventually they got kind of um, uh, united or got together. Uh, somewhere around the beginning of 1200. Okay. So this is the time when the, the Mongols, uh, one tribe of Mong some Armenian historians are saying that uh, there were 60 to 70 different tribes of this. Uh, the Mongols. Race. Yeah. 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 Up to that. Because there were tribes, like, yeah. spread out all over the place. Now, this one tribe, uh, the leader of which was uh, this Chinggis Khan, yeah. the Mongol, decided that <clears throat> the main thing to... The best thing to do is just to go around and kill the neighbors, conquer their lands, yeah. steal everything that they have, even in their uh, worship. Uh, if you read uh, the worship that they have had, what they are going to do and what they are going to accomplish, it blows your mind. What kind of a sadism and yeah. um, human-hating mentality is this? Complete yeah. brutality. Absolute yeah. brutality. It's the, yeah. it's the end of the brutality. And they uh, eventually uh, went into... Uh, today's country that we know as a China, <clears throat> and they had some kind of a small wall, it didn't uh, help them, but then after the uh, Chinggis Khan and Mongol, uh, the Batu Khan and all those guys left, they had to uh, erect a better, yeah, better the, wall. Yeah, of course, yeah. <clears throat> but the Chinggis Khan uh, actually went in there about 1216, 17, and by 1219, he was able to conquer China. 
<laughs> no, northern part. Yeah, the nor yeah, not just, fully China. Yeah, just just, just yeah, because uh, China fought really hard against them. Yes, uh, what I mean is uh, that when you make the king uh, give up, yeah, and uh, surrender, then they write that he conquered it, just like a. Uh, uh, Darius, uh, the yeah. first conquered so many countries, conquered Armenian king, but he didn't conquer the country. Yeah, he just he, only made yeah. the king s uh, surrender, surrender and subdued him. Yeah, yeah. And that's how they write about those things, yeah. you know. So anyway, he took control over northern part of China, and then he decided that he was going to go all the way west because he heard that Rome's country, Rome and the Byzantine Empire, mm -hmm. that day, was very rich. Yeah. So he had to go that way. Wanted to sniff. <clears throat> yeah. Why? Because he had already heard that there is a rich country over there. Mm -hmm. And who came to that part of the world first? Alpaslan. So Alpaslan, another Seljuk tribes leader. Mm -hmm. uh, now we are at the point where we have to understand all these different tribes had different leaders, different names of leaders. So Alpaslan was a leader of the Seljuk Turks. Now, are the Seljuks the same race, yes. if you call them the yellow? Yes. So they are the same? Yes. Okay. I am not saying that. About 10 years ago, uh, Erdogan's deputy in a Bible University was having a speech. Uh -huh. One of the uh, young girls asked him a question, Mr. So-and-so, oh, you're talking about uh, this uh, universal values and all that. What happened to our Turkishness? Aren't we Turkish? From Asia, mm -hmm. his response, quote, direct quote, look around you, which one is of you is from Asia? We are a mixture of yeah. people. Mm -hmm. So this is his response. So he's right. So today's so Turkey is a mixture of Armenians, yeah. Greeks, um, Assyrians, Assyrians, uh, Jews, yeah. Kurds, Kurds, everything. Kurds, yeah. It's a synthesis people. Yeah. Now go back, uh, rewind. So when this uh, Alpaslan came, uh, somewhere around uh, 1,000 or so, they had conquered already Afghanistan. They had massacred the Iranians. They have murdered so many Iranians that you can't count. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, 1,270, their leader was a Seljuk. Uh, I have the name written here down here. I don't like the guy's name. I can't remember. <laughs> Seljuk was the leader of Iran. He, when he created the new... Uh, when he conquered. Uh, yeah, new yeah. Um, calendar for Nebru's, uh, March 21st, he established as a new, uh, first day of the new year. He called it Nebru's. So yeah. the Seljuk guy did it, mm -hmm. 1270. So what I'm saying is they had covered all that entire area. Yeah. So this is one branch we're talking about. But there are 60 to 70 of them. So everyone did something. Like uh, after Ching, uh, Chinggis Khan, his grandson Batu Khan came all the way to Armenia. Mm. And that wasn't enough. Uh, Timur the Link came all the way to Armenia. They they called him Link because he kind of got, had a leg problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he was limping. So, so this, this guy, is what uh, between twelfth century or yeah, third, uh, he started twelve nineteen yeah. and then uh, twelve forty. Uh, Batu Khan conquered Kiev, the, the capital city of You're, today. Those yeah. days, Russia. Mm -hmm. They call it Kievian Russia. Russia. Yeah. He conquered it in twelve forty. Wow. He had it in his hands. And Mongols That's pretty far kept north. complete control yeah. over today's Russia. And now we're coming to the problems between Armenians and Russians. Now we're, we're getting there. Uh -huh. So when these Mongols, that tribe of Mongols, Genghis Khan's line, conquered Russia, came all the way to Kiev, they went to today's Crimea. Mm -hmm. Their headquarters was based in Crimea. And wow. they stayed there, those Tatars stayed there all the way until recently. They still live there, some Tatars. Mm -hmm. Stalin uh, exiled them back to uh, mid Siberia. <laughs> Not Siberia, but the where they originated from. Oh, isn't that where everybody went? <laughs> it was like gulags. Yeah, exactly. so. yeah. He uh, exiled them back to uh, Altaisky Krai, you know, Altai region, mm -hmm. yeah. where the innocent people would be exiled. Barnaul. Is the capital city. I have been in Barnaul in Altaski, but not as a prisoner, but as an athlete. Yeah, I, I know the area very well. As I know, a tourist, I, I traveled all over Russia. So, <clears throat> what I'm saying is, this tribe of Chinggis Khan and his grandson and blah blah, they came and conquered all over Russia. 
they conquered a city called Moscovit, Moscovia, Moscovia, mm -hmm. and they called themselves Moscovites. That was a little town, little village on the river, Moscow River, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then eventually they built a wooden uh, structure and they called it Kremlin, Kremlin, yeah. and that's a Tatar word, by the way. Kremlin. Tatar, Kremlin. Tatars yeah. established that city, and they uh, eventually at 1713, Peter the Great declared Russia as an empire, and uh -huh. he prohibited anyone talking about city that city and call it uh, Moscow, Moscow, Moscow something, and call themselves Moscovites. He uh, ordered them to call themselves Russian. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where he uh, declared the Russian Empire, 1713. Okay, AD. So that's the Peter the Great. Yeah. Great because I mean that's way before everything else that happened, obviously. But, but all these Mongols got established all over Russia. Okay. So in today's Russia, there are 21 republics of Mongol Tatar origin. Most of them are Islam. Okay. Interesting. So in Russia, 140 million people today, about 75 million of them, they say, are Islam. So that's why Erdogan was uh, threatening Putin, say, hey, look, be careful. I got too many people of my race and my religion over under your well, control. A lot yeah. of sleeping well, cells. Well, I mean, a lot of a lot of the former Soviet republics are still Islam. They're full yes. Islam. Yes, yes. Mostly, North, mostly North, Islam. North Caucasus. Yeah. And all the Eastern republics. Mm -hmm. No, well, I I gotta say when I when I was a kid and when we were traveling to America and we stayed in Russia for about a month, um, you know, I had never been there obviously, and as a child. You know, typically when you think of Russia, you think of like you know white, blonde, blue eyes, and then we would see these Asian-looking Russians, and it, you know, I, I would be like, okay, well, okay, what's going on here? Like, but I was a kid, I didn't understand. These but those are, are all races of the descendants uh, Mongols, of the descendants. Yeah. Now, since there are there are, there are many of them, they are the great population. There, there are great numbers of that kind of yeah. a population. So what happened is the uh, Russian government uh, has been recently under constant pressure, you see, under these Mongols. Yeah. Now, when you say Tatar, Tatar is an adjective. It means nomad. Mm. The uh, name of the race is Mongo, uh, the Mongol, Mongol mm, Mongolian yeah. race. Now, what we have are facing today is this. Actual Russians are the Slavic people who uh, traveled about four or five thousand years ago, from the southern part of today's Armenia, like today's the Arbeki region, yeah, all the way through Balkan mountains, Balkan area, mm -hmm. all the way to Slovenia area today, went into today's Ukraine area, and they settled over there until later on, some other people from the north, from Scandinavia, came down and mixed with these people, and uh, Lithuanians, uh, some Scandinavians some so-called Polish that are Slavic yeah. people also. So all they got intermingled. And in uh, 17, uh, 1570 to 1760, they, they had Rich Pospolita, Polish state. Okay. That included Poles, Ukrainians, and they kind of mixed together. They were uh, same basic um, uh, genetic origin, same culture mostly. Yeah. Later, Ukraine was the leftover of the original Russia. You see, the East Moscow, Moscovites, yeah. and the rest are Russian speaking Mongols, mostly. Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you have you have you seen the people from like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan? Yeah. They look yellow. Okay. They look Asian. Okay. But they speak Russian. Yeah. Because a lot of them has been under Soviet control for a long time. Yeah. So those republics, some of Turkish, actually Turkic republics, like Turkmenistan, yeah, and a couple of other Tajiks are of Iranian origin. Like uh, most of the Afghanistan are of the uh, Iranian stock. I mean, these people have mixed together throughout the last one thousand years, and they don't even know where they came from. Yeah. Because of the absence of education, knowledge, and all that. But the basic damage that was done to Russia, Russia, Slavic Russia, is the Mongols did it to them. Yeah. And that's why today Putin himself is thinking like a Chinggis Khan. Yeah. He thinks he is the chief, he's the Khan. Everybody uh, or everybody else is the, his product, his um, slave, his belonging. Yeah. Well, if you really look at him, he does have a slight Asian, uh, uh, you know, uh, with his eyes, so he could have genetics that is from the defense minister is um, 
from Lavrov. No, no, defense minister. No, oh, the first... Shaigu. Shaigu. Oh, Shaigu. He's yeah. uh, half Mongolian and half something yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, he divorced his first wife, uh, supposedly Russian, and he, according to all the news, he lives with uh, his mistress of uh, Uzbek origin. She's okay. Uzbek, Uzbek uh, gymnast. So uh, these people have a very strong drive towards East, towards Mongolia, mm-hmm. yeah. their culture, their habits, their culture. I mean, go conquer, murder, steal, rob, and they're yours. They don't understand anything else. Their culture, like the, um, uh, Samuel Huntington has a very nice book. He says, The Clash of Civilizations, these two civilizations have clashed very drastically, very strongly, you know, this East and West. Mm. So-called, so-called Eastern civilization is the Mongolic Tatar way of thinking. Go kill, rob. Yeah. So-called Western civilization is based on the Aryan race philosophy, like originated from Armenia. Mm-hmm. When I say Aryan, I don't mean better than everybody else. Yeah. I mean, that's the way they were. Well, that, that term was misconstrued oh, during oh, yeah. world, post-World War II. We know it was. We know yeah. that, that yeah. moron uh, ruined the world. But the word is not guilty uh, that you are translating it the wrong, uh, no. wrong, wrong way. No, of course not. The Aryan is the origin. That's all it means. Yeah, absolutely. It's from the word Ar. Ar is the very first word in Armenian language. Everything positive in Armenian language starts with R. Yeah, and we don't have a negative word with R. Anyway, let's go back to uh, Mongols and uh, uh, Western civilization. The Western civilization thinks differently. Yes, they do a lot of bad things. They, yes, they have done uh, Crusader wars. Yes, they, they have killed a lot of people. Yes, they have robbed a lot of other people. But the Western mentality is totally opposite of the Mongolian mentality. I mean, just, they just can't go hand in hand. They are opposite. I mean, I, I don't know which one you like, but they are different. Dep- depends on how you want to uh, rummage, pillage. Whatever you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what's your choice? Yeah. Which, uh, which way you want to rob and uh, Yeah, and that's exactly. It? Which way do you want to rummage and pillage? You see, the Western civilization, if you look at it, let's take Roman Empire. Mm-hmm. What did they do? They went into all kinds of different countries and they robbed and brought a lot of slaves. Yeah. And then made them work for their country, and they created their own country. Let uh, today's Rome is built by slaves. Yeah, all those great um, stru- monuments, monuments and structures, and, yeah. and those colosseums and all those buildings were built by uh, slaves. But the funny thing is, this, the slave owner, when he bought the slave from the uh, uh, bazaar, from from the from where marketplace, yeah. from the marketplace, yeah. he brought him home, and he gave him a belt on that belt there was a lock and that key to that lock was held by the master, master. in his pocket yeah. when after a time when a slave wor- uh, worked his way uh, to the end his term yeah the master opened the belt and he was a free man and gave him money and opened the belt and that was called a master key does it does it ring a bell yeah, master course. key Interesting where that comes from. <laughs> so he opened the belt and gave him the paper, gave him his money, and he was, voila, he was a citizen of Rome. So that's how the, the citizens of Rome uh, became so many. I mean, multiplied. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are little things in history that if you read, you, you, it blows your mind. Say, Whoa, how come I didn't know it? Because you didn't read it. Yeah, so people read. Dig into it. <laughs> the moral of that show. Read. It will only help you. There's, a, only help you. there's yeah. a lot of terminologies that come yeah. from some very interesting places. Like, very. Uh, we went too far away from Mongols. We'll go back to Mongols. But uh, Armenian uh, history was totally burned down and destroyed and everything else. All of a sudden, you open a Roman book and you see your king, Tertat III's picture in a Roman book. Uh, well, they hijacked everything. Yeah. Uh, because the guy b- grew up in Rome. Uh, well, yeah, but still. Most of, but we don't have it, they have it. Most most history, we know, it's tied into Roman history. Yeah. That's well, the way, I mean, that's, listen, that's where This is an argument starts. that the reason we don't have it is because it was destroyed. Destroyed. Yeah. yeah. They had... Destroyed by they? our own. Well, everybody. <laughs> everybody who wanted to go over Armenia, they destroyed it and robbed it. And Lucolos took the Anahit's uh, statue, I mean. No, I'm talking about the the historical text pre pre Tartad. If you go mm-hmm. back, all yeah. that stuff that we claim that doesn't exist, 
um, is destroyed by our own people. And, and, you know, and I, I personally think that if we are able to actually excavate in uh, Armenian highlands, mm -hmm. we will find a lot more about our history. I think it's buried there. A lot of stuff is buried there. Most of Armenian uh, ancient history is under the dirt in yeah. today's Turkey. Yeah. Portasar, uh, Göbekli Tepe. They're digging. Yeah. Uh, every, everything is under the dirt. Mm -hmm. But anyway, God, uh, thank God that it's been all saved under dirt. Yeah. The Sumerian tablets was uh, saved. But, you know, it's the, interesting now they're saying that even Portasar, and, yeah. and it's not just Portasar, it's the, these these. Go back the tepe and there's different mm -hmm. tepes, there's mm -hmm. you know, different names, few of them, and they keep discovering new ones. Um, they're saying that they were actually um, covered on purpose. Yes, uh, the purpose, to protect it. Yeah, the purpose, uh, according to uh, the German scientist who discovered it first, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, 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 I'll remember in a minute. Look, look what the age does to you. <laughs> yeah, you're you look you're looking younger than by the day. <laughs> I wish I knew half of the stuff that he talked about. Yeah. He's complaining about his age. <laughs> After I went over fifty, I started That's forgetting names. <clears throat> anyway, uh, what happened is we were talking about uh, 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 precision of equinoxes a few minutes yeah. ago yeah. before we started. So what happened is they were all astrophysics astrophysicists. All these guys, yeah. they were not just simply monks and stuff. Um, mm -hmm prayers and this and that they were actually physicists they knew the universe how it worked yep they knew how the solar system worked and what happened is they built that specifically for that purpose is that the name Klaus me ah, yeah. there we there go. go thanks Thank for reminding you. me actually how do you pronounce her name Guzide, Guzide, is that correct? Guzide, can you correct? Are we yeah. doing actually, the She, she's actually from France. She lives in France, right? Germany. Oh, Germany, Germany. Germany. Yeah. And she is Turkish. Turkish. Yeah. And actually, she, well, she follows us. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. We appreciate it. She so loves our meetings. Spoken to her at your time. She's yeah. awesome. She's awesome. Uh, thank so you. Let me thank her for one more thing. Uh, Klaus Schmidt's wife was a Turkish woman. Okay. And she helped him a lot. Yeah. I mean, we have to thank all these people who have helped the uh, yeah. scientists. For me, there is no religion, there is no country. For me, yeah. the science and history comes first. And, and you know what it is? It's like like people like uh, uh, Guzide, uh, and again, I hope I'm uh, pronouncing this correctly. You know, she's Turkish, right? Yeah. And she opened her eyes and and mind to learn true history. And yeah. it doesn't matter. Listen, people are people. End of the day, yeah. whatever has happened, it's through government and you know the the leaders and this and that. But this just proves that you know. If you learn history, your own and other people's, you will accept and, and be more friendly. And uh, I don't know. I just, uh, yeah, it you know, is. that's the goal. That's the ultimate goal, right? Ooh, ooh. It's history. Yeah. It's not happening now. Yeah. It happened a long time ago. To um, make my point to the subject is very simple. I have been in today's Turkey five times. If I want, if I were to hate anybody or Mislike yeah, yeah. anyone, yeah. I, I wouldn't go to his house five times. Yeah. Yep. So, I, <laughs> so you know, I always say, I, I always say, even if you look at Azerbaijan, listen. At the end of the day, they're people, right? They're people. They're just misinformed. They're Bad brain, brain, politicians. yeah, brainwashed. Yeah. You <laughs> cannot blame those children that you see the videos that have been brainwashed from from kindergarten. You know, having armenophobia towards. Uh, Armenians and 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 it, it, even their soldiers like this is what they've been taught right so uh, you can't hate them for nature that. nature versus nurture yeah so um, same thing with with a lot of and I don't think most of Turkey is like this I think it's just the, the older generation the newer generation I think is more look open minded and five times wonderful people yeah I've got to tell you that forget the politics they do have Armenian blood eventually in that so. yeah they do <laughs> I mean come on. Yeah. Uh, let's put the politics for yeah. aside yeah. for a minute. I uh, was talking about the Klaus Schmidt's uh, uh, Portasar, Göbekli Tepe, yeah. and there are Khetakan uh, um, the Hittite kingdom, yes. Hittite yeah. kingdom in uh, uh, north of Ankara, in that region where mm -hmm. uh, where Hittites, uh, so called Khet in uh, Armenian, lived, and they have left. Um, uh, script on a rock uh, uh, they used to write write on the rocks those days yeah, you know they, yeah. they didn't have anything else to write on uh, petroglyph 
Okay. One petroglyph, there is a writing between two Armenian kings of Hittites and uh, uh, Mitanni talk our mm-hmm. kings. Yeah, Mitanni. They were they were uh, uh, asking Mir God, Mir son God, mm-hmm. yeah. to help them to uh, make their treaty between them two last forever because they had signed a treaty between them two. Yeah. So they're not gonna fight anymore. So yeah. they are begging Mira Mitra to help them their treaty last forever. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, put an iron seal on it. It's so on it rock. Yeah. It's on, it was um, found in uh, ruins of um, Hatusha, is the uh, capital city of Hittite kingdom. Yeah. Uh, but uh, let's uh, go back to our uh, Mongolian uh, stuff. Now, since this civilization and uh, Arpaslan did everything, and uh, 1064 he came all the way to uh, Ani, in uh, 1071 he had his battle against Greek uh, army. Armenians didn't have army at that time mm-hmm. because Greeks destroyed our kingdom. Uh, the um, Bagratuni kingdom was sold by the archbishop, uh, not the archbishop, uh, the Catholicus, uh, Pedros Gedadar sold the kingdom and the king mm-hmm. to the uh, Vasil, Vasil third, Vasil II, Vasil the uh, Bulgarian murderer. The murder of Bulgaria. Yeah. We haven't gotten <laughs> to that yet. Yeah, we yeah. Haven't gotten so, it, what yeah. happened is, um, um, <laughs> the uh, Seljuk uh, tribe uh-huh. was able to beat the Greek army. Alpaslan beat the Greek army and took him prisoner, the king, uh, uh, emperor prisoner. And to save his own life, that Greek emperor signed off most of the Western Armenia to the uh, Alpaslan. So that's how he w- moved in further into the so-called Western Armenia at that time, Eastern Byzantium. Yeah. Uh, and slowly, it was a politics. You know, Alpaslan made friendship with Arabic uh, tribes. They became stronger and better and uh, went all the way to Constantinople. By 1099, he was under Constantinople. And this Greek... Uh, uh, emperor start begging for help from Rome. The Roman Pope said, "You got to change the, your uh, religion to Catholicism. You are Greek Orthodox. It's no good. You got to yeah. change it to Catholicism." And uh, by the t- by the time they were, de- it's no good. No, 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 good. no, no, no good. No work for me. No, no work. <laughs> by the time they were deliberating what to do, uh, the uh, Greek Emperor sent a request to Roman uh, Pope to help. Uh-huh. This guy assembles huge army of the crusaders and they come and they go right by Constantinople and go all the way down to Jerusalem to save the grave of Jesus. That's their slogan. We're going to go save the grave of Jesus. And they forget about Constantinople. Forget about it. Who needs yeah. yeah. And then uh, eventually uh, Al-Pastan and then the further... Uh, uh, sultans and uh, Seljuk, uh, the, the Ottoman uh, uh, sultans got stronger and more powerful, more powerful until 1453 in uh, May they were able to conquer Constantinople because these stupid Greeks didn't change their uh, religion into <laughs> Catholicism and they remained. <laughs> remained uh, I love how blunt he is, stupid Greeks. <laughs> uh, remained, you know, the Greeks have made a lot of mistakes over yeah. the centuries. Yeah. So they destroyed the Armenian kingdom. Uh, yeah. The Bagrat and then Greece. destroyed themselves. And destroyed yeah. themselves. And the Roman Catholic Church didn't care about them. And this is how the, uh, yeah. the, the movement started. Yeah. They went all the way to Constant, uh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem and they established themselves in a, a temple of... Uh, uh, the Templar Knights? Uh, yeah, the Templars. You know, the among, the name, among many, many orders. The yeah. name, name of the Templars comes from the temple that, where they're established as their headquarters. Yeah. And then eventually they fought a lot of wars against the local Islam, uh, so-called Arabic Islam natives. Yeah. They fought many wars until Salah Eddin came along and uh, kicked their butt and they said, get out of here. But they left Middle East with a lot of uh, loot. The re- riches, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and they yeah. put all of that stuff in their, in their ships and they went all the way to uh, oh, okay. Rochelle in France. And then from Rochelle they went to uh, Scotland. And anyway, it's a long story. But uh, to come back to our uh, Alpha Slang guy, he did what he thought it was right. And he was the, out there to conquer, and he did conquer, and he killed and uh, took whatever he could. 
you know, in uh, history, in, in those times, you cannot uh, judge by today's brains. You cannot no. say he was right, he was wrong. Nobody's right or wrong. You can protect yourself, you protect yourself. You can't, somebody else will come and take it over. Yeah. And then you will follow his value system. Well, I mean, that's the way it was back then. It was, you know, die by the, live by the sword, die by the sword, right? Yeah. This, this was it. You can't hide over there. Uh, one times. one uh, interesting moment in our history is that always um, uh, it has caught my attention and I will think about it. When uh, Tigranes the Great had his uh, fight with the Roman Empire, uh, one of the Roman emperors, uh, Pompeius, came all the way to uh, Armenia and he forced the Grants to sign a treaty, peace treaty, mm -hmm. and give up all the territories that he had conquered from Roman Empire, like uh, today, Poker Hiking, Asum, mm -hmm. Cappadocia was a Hak, yeah. small Cappadocia, Armenia. Yeah. Yeah. And so he had to give it back. So when they conquered Cappadocia, uh, Tigranes, with Mirdat, uh, the Pontasi, you know, the king of Black Sea, yes. Mirdat Pontasi. Mm -hmm. So with him, they had conquered Cappadocia, the small Armenia. Uh, Tigranes took the people and the animals and he gave you're talking about lesser Armenia. Yeah, lesser yeah. Armenia. You gave the, this uh, Greek uh, king yeah, me, near me, that me, me the dollars. land. Me three dollars. The land. But when, when Pompeius guy. came, he took the land. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? He eventually he ran all the way to um, uh, Feodosia. You know Feodosia in today's Crimea? There's a city oh, called Feodosia. Okay. Uh, the, that's where he had his center, his kingdom. Oh, that's right. We talked Mirdat about Pontasi. this. Yeah, that's right. That's where he, wait, isn't that where he ran off to? Yeah, well, yeah he ran off to, yeah. that's right. Eventually yeah. he killed himself. Yes. Yeah. He committed suicide yeah, yeah, yeah. because he lost he ran, the war. He ran to Crimea, basically. Yeah. He lost the war against the Roman. Yeah. Uh, and he cried over there. Crimea. Yes. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> he tried to bribe Tigranes, uh, gave his 17-year-old daughter as a yeah. wife to Tigranes. Yeah. He talked that, about this. That yeah. woman had a boy and then eventually he grew up and he secretly wanted to work with the Romans and kind of was against his father and then Pompeius gave him back and he executed that son. It's a long story. But what Tigran, what I, why I brought this up is Tigranes the Great wanted to preserve the great Armenia, so Armenia Major, to preserve the highland and give up everything what was secondary for him. He gave up secondary part to uh, Pompeius and Pompeius was happy. He signed it, went back home uh, as a winner yeah and uh when i'm I, sure he could take what he when i was up. yeah when i was in italy the uh, rome i've been there many times in uh villa 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 borghese yeah the, there are the uh, statues of all these emperors and uh, caesars uh, pompeius is uh, bust is bust also is there, there yeah. yeah in villa borghese i haven't been i've just seen a lot of the photos from villa borghese it's nice place. Yeah, it's there's nice. a lot of nice places in Italy. I can't wait <laughs> no, to go. Whole Italy is nice place. Yeah, I there's an interesting wait, conversation uh, going on in the chat between uh -huh. Chuck and uh, Anna. Chuck is making some points. Um, Anything we can talk about? Um, well, he was saying, um, he said Anatolia was not Greek before Alexander the Great. Did Alexander uh, kill all the Anatolian people like Lydians? Uh, what is that? Priffians, Lucians, etc. He says, similarly, before Armenian people in the eastern Anatolia around the city of Vaughan used Hurrian, which is totally different language than Armenian. Um, okay, two parts. Uh, don't forget that Hurrian part. I will come to that second. Uh -huh. But the first part, when uh, he's talking about so-called Anatolian, don't forget the word Anatolia in, was invented by a British Prime Minister Disraeli. In 1869, Disraeli became a prime minister of Britain. Mm -hmm. and next year, he invented this word Anatolia for Armenia. Okay. Because Anatolia in Greek means east. In other words, he called that territory Eastern Anatolia. Meaning and then there was Eastern like east, east, Eastern East, Eastern yeah, east. the furthest. Yeah. It's, it's a uh, nonsense. Yeah. Uh, but that's what uh, Disraeli did yeah. to destroy the name Great Armenia. You know, yeah. On all British maps that I have, it always clearly says uh, Armenia Major. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, 1840s, 50s, I have maps. But what he did is destroyed the history and changed the name. Now that's Anatolia. Before, before Greeks ever f uh, set foot in um, Cappadocia and all those regions, mm -hmm. before they foot, uh, set foot in there, 
they were naturally people and uh, ethnic groups that lived there. The Sprugians, this Butania state, and so many different kind of people lived there. Yes, they were all originated from the same ethnic stock that originated in that Asia Minor. And then slowly, slowly, eventually, the Sprugians got on ships and they went all the way to the other uh, areas, part, other parts of the planet. But they left their original um, uh, homeland, so-called. Yeah. And that area, I have been in Cappadocia a couple of times. I mean, every ethnic group has left something behind, culture-wise, in that area. And uh, uh, Romans, uh, I mean, so I'm sorry, the Greeks, Helens, they were called yeah, Helens uh, yeah. originally, set foot in uh, Asia Minor during the Trojan War, 1100 approximately BC. Mm -hmm. And why we know that? Mr. Homer, the poet, wrote the Iliad and uh, uh, Odyssey, you know, the Iliad and the Odyssey poems that he wrote. Yeah. So it was about that Trojan War. And uh, Heinrich Schliemann believed in uh, the story and he started digging in there. He found seven Troys there on top of each other. <laughs> Every time they rebuilt the Troy, you know, they got one more on top of it. But uh, the original Troy was there. And local people, to the point of what our friend is saying, to his point, yes, there were people living there. Yeah. Some kind of people who originated yeah. in, that area. in that area. And funny thing is, the Armenians had a small contingent of army helping the locals over there. Because the Helens were the invaders. Yeah. Agamemnon and uh, Achilles were all those guys were invaders. Okay. And uh, yes, there were many people in that neighborhood. But uh, when you're talking about Hurrian language, let me tell you uh, very uh, specifically. Hurrian language or, uh, is a, such a language that I had not a knowledge of or I did not know anyone who could read the uh, um, a script or or, or um, petroglyphs or whatever in the Hurrian language until uh, one of our friends, Iranian Armenian guy by name Varujan Ersisyan, was able to decipher it. Okay. In 1973, uh, the professors of UCLA uh, uh, stumbled into this uh, Hurrian um, uh, manuscript, and not manuscript. It's a, a carving on a on a rock. Okay. And they thought. It was a, it was a musical notes on there, musical signs yeah. or or chazer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they brought back notes. to Los Angeles. Yeah. They uh, translated it according to their uh, ability, and they created the music. Uh, her name was one uh, professor was a woman. Her name was Hillard, I think Hillard, and uh, the other guy. So they wrote a the music and they played on on a on harp. Harp. Okay. So eventually, when this uh, friend of ours, Varujan Nersisian, was able to translate it from all original Hurrian language. Their, their uh, capital city, uh, their center origin was Ugarit, in today's Syria, north, northern Syria, Ugarit. Okay. So that little piece of rock was found in Ugarit. So these guys, these professors, created the music out of it, and they played that music. And our guy, Varujan Nersisian, translated into modern Armenian. He worked on it for several years, comparing with Hittite uh, language, like Heteri Elizabeth, yeah. and comparing with uh, all other old Armenian dialects. Eventually, he was able to translate it properly, and it is an uh, ode to the victory of Haik against Mel. So let me ask, so as far as Hurrian language goes, nobody yeah. has, that's the only piece of information that's, that's been found been so far yes and, uh, and deciphered and this guy is the only guy who can read the hurian uh yeah I was about to ask. so he's le legitimately the only person that could read this well i we haven't heard about anybody else. so no we, no american uh like uh, academia nobody has tried to to actually uh decipher this they it's, tried these two professors of ucla uh -huh. right okay it's even published in a Magic. No, no, I know. You said they turned it into a musical. Music, yeah. yeah, music. They thought yeah. that there was a musical sign there. Because, yeah, because it was close to how notes are written. I, I understand that. So they thought it was a musical thing. And then y your friend deciphered Roger it. Roger did. Now, yeah. let me tell you one more uh -huh. thing. Three years ago, we had a big uh, so-called conference in uh, Glendale Library. And we had uh, three scientists there. 
to talk about this old stuff. One of them was Varujan Nersis and him. Mm-hmm. We gave him enough time to uh, make his point. And there was uh, two other guys, that, you know. Is Varujan, uh, does he speak English? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, he does. Oh, we should have him so, on the show. Uh, he won't. He won't come. Until, <laughs> uh, ten, Thanks. <laughs> ten, <laughs> ten years ago, I spent a lot of time and energy trying to bring him into my own TV uh-huh. show. I, I used to have a TV show. Yeah, of course, yeah, we know. That's how we <laughs> so, <laughs> It took me, took me six months. But uh, how did I do that? I said, Waru John, look, we're going to sit there. No camera. No Just recording. Talk. We're just going to talk. Mm-hmm. And you see how you feel with the microphone, okay? And the microphone is going to be on your chest. It ain't going to be here. Yeah. It was a. Uh, <laughs> oh, was, one of those. Yeah, like the lavalier, lavalier mics. And I put him there, and we started talking. And I told the guy to turn the camera on. He wouldn't see. It. Yeah. He would see if the camera was rolling. <laughs> when we finished, I said, Varujan, we did it. You know, we finished the program. He said, Yeah, we did. He said, Yeah, I did. We did. Yeah. Oh, good. He was very nervous, you know. It was not that he wanted to hide something. He just wasn't too nervous about the. Uh, he was calm. He was calm throughout the entire conversation. Yeah, he was calm. Yeah, because he, he didn't, didn't know. know we were recording him. So you got to play tricks with Armenians. You have to go uh, yeah. the nine yards. But uh, closing uh, down on that uh, Hurian uh, issue, there is so-called Hurian language because it's just a dialect of old, old, old Armenian language. And there is the, the language of so-called uh, Van uh, Urartian. Urartian mm-hmm. word is an invented word. Yeah. You know, you can read uh, Urartu, you can read Ararat, Ararat you yeah. can read whatever. Yeah. You, the Assyriologists uh, deliberately yeah. changed yeah. it. Uh, among them, uh, Piotrowski from uh, Leningrad. Yeah. Uh, and there, there's been some amazing uh, recent finds. And we're actually, uh, Yerisha is going to be back on the show with us in, in a couple of weeks. And we're going to be talking about the the, the yeah. new findings, some amazing stuff Steve that's come out about U- U- Urartu. Um, and uh, we'll have him on the show. He's going to join us live from, uh, I think he's in Holland, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's in Holland. Yeah. He's based out of Holland. Um, uh, let's go back to the whole Stoljiks. Let's, yeah. let's kind of go back to mm-hmm. the main topic. So yes. um, where we left off, I mean, we're talking about the Mongols. We covered like, you yeah. know. But... So the reason why we have all these problems today mm-hmm. with uh, uh, the Sultan of uh, Baku, Aliyev, <laughs> Sultan of Moscow, Chinggis Khan of Moscow, uh, Putin, and our uh, our <laughs> friend Erdogan in Ankara. These guys don't care about people. They don't care about cultures. They don't care about yeah. anything. All they care about is power and money. That's all what drives them, power and money. And they have found the common ground to play their game together. So I always, when we talk about the subject in Armenian uh, surround, you know, circles, I always say, look at it this way. The uh, Alpaslan from the bottom mm-hmm. and the Seljuks from the top, they came and they just grabbed Armenia from both sides. And in 1724, uh, Peter, Peter the Great and uh, Mehmed III, Sultan of uh, Ottoman Empire, signed a treaty. It's, it's a document, yeah. historical. They divided Armenia between them two, Ottoman Empire and Russian Empire. Russian Empire they, yeah. they took away the power, uh, eastern part from uh, Persians. The mm-hmm. Persians are screaming and yelling until today that it belonged to us. It belo- Yes, it did belong to you, but the Russians took it over. Yeah. They, they beat you up twice, and uh, by 1828, they signed the, the Treaty of Turkmenchai, 1828, after conquering Yerevan, and they took the whole uh, area yeah. from Iran. So. Uh, today's Armenia, today's Nakhichewan, today's Karabakh, Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Paul, uh, Ganja, all was part of uh, Iran. Now it's part of Russia for the last 200 years. When you say years. part of Iran, it was ruled by Iran. They yeah. conquered it because there was no Armenian statehood or kingdom of course. to take care of it. I understand, but see, you, you, have to, you have to word that correctly. Yes, it was ruled by Iran, but it was still Armenian land. It was, it was conquered. Oh, there yeah. was Armenians in it. There was Armenians in That's it. it. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. But, look, but he's saying there. He's saying there was no structure. There was of no course, yeah. That, 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 and that's the problem we've had yeah. throughout history. Is well, we've had these periods of time where we had no kingdoms, no government, none of that. So we were conquered and controlled by others. The, uh, others. Yes. 
Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You have, it, I, when you say it like that, it seems like that those are Iranian lands. No, no it's not. No, look, it, 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 that's. It, it, I want to clarify that because then people, you got to understand something with people online with this new generation, they are so. Um, they they only read. Headlines. Yeah, it's like it's the the, the thirty second snippet. You know, they somebody say these are Iranian lands, just like Azerbaijan does it right now. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I want to clarify that that okay. those are Armenian lands okay. that were just ruled by Iran at that time because we were conquered by them, mm -hmm. just like how Rome conquered. Uh, you know, half of uh, and they called it Byzantium or whatever. Just yeah. the same concept. Okay. You know. Let me uh, give a little bit more clarification on this subject since we. Uh, you brought this up. We call Armenian land because we don't know anyone else who has lived on that land before Armenians. Yeah, that's why we call original Armenian land. Armenians originated on that piece of land. Yeah. Now, since we know that, everybody else who came there from Rome, from South Assyria, from East, uh, from North, whatever, are newcomers and conquerors. Okay, mm -hmm. now, uh, whatever uh, concerns about the Iranian issue, don't forget there was no Iran uh, 1200 BC. There was no such country. Yeah. What happened is, according to the best historian of the Iranian history, and Avesta, and all of that, Hovik Narsisyan, he's dead now. He has several books on the subject. You can read. Uh, he insisted. And he found he used to read only uh, cuneiforms, and he used to tell me, "Listen, I will believe only on a fact that is written on the three different rocks, in different locations. Then I will believe it. Whatever is written on a paper, I don't believe it. People wrote it. I don't yeah. believe it." Yeah. So he had cuneiforms on three different rocks, and then I'll give you another um, another uh, proof. So that about twelve hundred or so BC. Mm -hmm. A bunch of folks who lived in the Armenian highland yeah. moved to east, where today's uh, Urmialich is, Kaputan Urmialich, mm -hmm. and they uh, further south from that area, all the way to Zagros Mountains. So it took them about three, four hundred years to get established over there. And they were called Pars. Pars in Armenian means flying bees. Pars? Pars. 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 comes from that word. Pars. Pars. K is uh, plural. Yeah. Pars. Pars is flying bees. So these guys flew from Armenia all the way east and south and they established a new uh, state. There was nobody there at that time. And the, uh, the uh, Sartur II, uh, uh, 764 BC, Urartian king, <laughs> sent his uh, body, his uh, priest body to... Yeah teach Mitraism to those people who had left Armenia. So he taught them the religion. And then eventually these guys changed slightly and became, uh, they wrote the book Avesta, which is written in the old, old, old Armenian uh, dialect. It is not Persian. Avesta is not written in Persian or, or uh, part of um, uh, language. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this is proven fact. It's not in me saying that. It's, it's a, Proven historical fact. Now, if later on, that uh, Avesta changed a few uh, historical facts and a few uh, worship um, uh, names. Aramas became Ahura Mazda, and you know they even worshipped Anahit until the fourth century, for God's sake. Anahit was worshipped in Babylon, yeah, as the was. main queen yeah, uh, uh, goddess. Yeah. Uh, Anahit was the main uh, creator goddess for the mm -hmm. Armenian folks. So uh, not to go too far about the subject, that later on they got more and more and they conquered the, the folks uh, east of their original land and they uh, became larger and larger and by uh, uh, the Akebenian dynasty became a very large from today's Zagros Mountains all the way to uh, Afghanistan. Yeah, uh, That's why... Um, uh, when Darius uh, first wrote his uh, carvings on the th three languages, yeah. on the rocks, you know, the, the, the trilingual uh, script on the rock, mm -hmm. he wrote, gave all the names of all the countries that he had conquered, like the kings and the territories, and, and he mentions the name of King of Armeni, Armani. Armani. Yeah, Armani. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the word Armani or Armenia is uh, de de derives from the word Ar from your race, from your original kind of a person, 
yeah. people. You are our people. But we believe, uh, we, we worship hike because we believe that our, our upper, God. uppermost God is hike. Yeah. That's why we call Orion is called high key Hamastekulsun. Orion is Greek. Greeks called it uh, Orion. Okay. We build in, believe in the high Hamastekulsun uh, um, constellation of Ike. I want to thank everybody who's joining us live on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, guys, if you have any questions for Hamlet, feel free to ask it in the chat and we'll discuss it. Um, so let's get back to the Seljuks. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about, we're about an hour in, let's cover them and okay. then see how we tie them all together. Let's bring these two uh, Joes of that same, same uh, fear or same, I don't want to call it animal, but the same structure together mm -hmm. yeah one from the bottom one from the top yeah so they have always worked together 1714 peter the great signs with meme third this is yours this is mine and they have been con uh, controlling those territories as their own since then now let me ask you something before you continue between the Seljuk and the mongols they seem like to be the same people what is their actual difference between them is it is it religious difference or is it um genetic no. different like okay. what is it because you know if they are from the same region then mm -hmm. why is one called seljuk why is one called different tribe different tribe why do uh, some are called uh Garabaxi, some are called uh well, Loretzi, some are called uh, but what i'm saying that it was was it they just called themselves that or was there something else about them that that made them different in all times tribes used to be called after their leader yeah and they're could be any so, reason why one tribe is called this way, the other tribe is called the other way. So mm -hmm. he he did mention earlier that they were what sixty or seventy Between tribes. Between sixty and seventy that proven came, that tribes the west, right? From, no, I understand from that. that yeah. So the Seljuks if are I, one if, of them. If I stand corrected, I mean, if I'm correct, if, is they they were they became maybe a more dominant force in that area of Mesopotamia or mm -hmm. whatever it is at that time. Mm -hmm. Is this Al Paslan was the dominant force okay. and he had the better army okay. who came from the south through Iran, through India. And these Iran. were the Seljuks. These were the Seljuks. These were the Seljuks. Yeah. yeah. And the other tribes, Shingis uh, uh, Khan and Batu Khan, were in the, uh, north and west. Yeah. And the Seljuks, I remember talking about it. Remember, they, they conquered the Arabs, they conquered oh, yeah. everybody. Uh, it, everybody. If you look at the map, they, it was. They, they, it was, came yeah. the they conquered yeah. the Arabs. Persians, the yeah. Armenians, everybody, everybody, yeah. everybody. The bodyguards for Arabic sheets were all Seljuks. Yeah, you know what amazes me? Yeah, if, if, we mentioned. Yeah, too. It, what amazes me of um, when we talk about different tribes, you know, to 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 be able to. I mean, I if you look at back in those times, how many of them were there that they were able to come and conquer? You're talking about so many different ethnic people mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. lived i mean you know if you look at the map that's a huge area mm -hmm. it's khan, fascinating yeah. chingis khan had one philosophy every man <laughs> kill every man in his under his control was a soldier soldier yeah he had to ride a horse and kill anyone who could run into and uh, uh, take their wives and their children and their wealth and it's theirs and yeah. that's it and all of that belongs to him no, but but you also got, I mean, the resistance. I mean, how good of fighters were they that they were able to pretty much... Fierce fighters, number one. Number two, that's all they knew. Number three, people who were attacked, they didn't know what the hell was going to happen to them. Some villages, you read the history uh, about these uh, events, mm -hmm. some uh, villages and cities, they, they opened the gates and they begged him, please don't kill, it's yours, come on and take it. Just like Alexander the Great originally when he started. Yeah. And he, did. He, he, would send, showed, he showed no mercy. He would send people to those little yeah. villages and tell them, if you do not resist, you'll be fine. All I will do is just take control over your location, take whatever I need. If you resist, I'm going to kill every one of you. Yeah. And he did, whoever resisted. But they didn't, they didn't care. They just, they killed anyways. We're talking about the uh, Soljuks and the uh, Mongols. Oh yeah, Seljuks and Mongols killed anyway. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like no. you open your door and say, "Don't do, I'll give it to you." That doesn't matter. They'll... Because Chinggis Khan had the philosophy: you have to go kill and conquer. That's in their blood. You see? Yeah, that's what they were born to do, born to kill. Yeah, they were brainwashed into this, and it, it continued in their DNA over there and over. Are, uh, I don't want to compare people with animals, but in a natural world, take the mm -hmm. natural forest. 
Yeah. There are some animals that are only killers. Yeah. Some animals that yeah predators. Yeah predators. Some animals that just eat grass and go on their life, yeah. minding their life. Some look, look at sharks. And other people eat those animals. Oh, not people. The, the other predators other, eat those uh, animals that are eating grass. It's, it's a cycle. It's a cycle. Yeah, yeah. But in human um, surroundings. It was not supposed to be that way. They, when the uh, creators created uh, so many different uh, tribes and, and uh, races, they were probably hoping to create a new civilization with a new kind of uh, experiment to see how this is going to work out. Because, and um, in my uh, view, after reading too many books, I came to a conclusion that all this don't love. All the spirits that exist in the universe, they have to come into a body to do their job and to the, accomplish their mission and their task and whatever they have to do, yeah. whatever their plans are, they need a body. So uh, at the, when a woman is pregnant, about three months old or so, the spirit comes and gets into, into that body and starts moving. Hmm. I can clearly remember when my wife was pregnant and was laying next to me and all of a sudden I... I felt like my future son was pushing her belly towards me and I felt his leg in my side. I was shocked. I was young man. I didn't yeah. know what the hell was going on here. And then I started studying the subject and I, we created, understood that the spirits come into the female body and at the age of three months old or so, and they start their life according to the plan. You mean three months into the pregnancy? Yeah, and they, yeah. they, have, they come with a specific plan, specific a mission. And then when they're done with this body, they'll go, and then God knows when they will come back again, and they will reincarnate. Yeah. And that's why all these good and bad actions of these people... Could stem from that, you, you're it, saying? It's going to hit them sometime, yeah. sometime, somewhere, somehow. And uh, that's my only problem, is I don't understand why so much bad has to happen all those bad spirits are gonna come back and correct themselves. They're they're bad actions. They have to come and do something to clear themselves. Yeah, and that's why I don't have the answer for well, this yet. They were, if if memory serves me right, Genghis Khan conquering yes. West, and then his sons, grandsons, etc. But true, they story. were by area larger than the Roman Empire ever was. Oh, oh yes. Yes, yes. So so technically they were the largest empire yes who exist in one period of time. Until uh Ivan Aher, Ivan the Ivan the Terrible. Yeah, Ivan uh, the Terrible. The beat, beat them and uh, took over the yeah. um, the control over that territory yeah. in uh, Kazan. And then eventually the Russians created uh, themselves a new uh, monarchy and uh, about 1680 something uh, one of the uh, religious guys son uh, was uh, placed in a throne as a king and uh, he was declared as a mm -hmm. uh, roman um, emperor and then the roman d dynasty went on from that guy he was a son of uh, some kind of clergy guy uh, in the c late 60 1600s uh, what i'm going to what i was trying to say is the russians took over the uh, power and the control over their territory yeah and then peter the great went all the way to uh, let's say constantinople went all the way to uh, the location that today is called to saint petersburg or it was called after him he uh, established that city at the uh, at the um, uh, sea uh, uh, he wanted to have a window to europe that's what his words yeah. window to europe and um, on a Baltic Sea, you know, where today is Latvia, yeah. Lithuania, Estonia, yeah, of are. course. And then his dream was to go to the West and uh, kind of mingle with the Western civilization. He probably knew what kind of a um, bad... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is background? <laughs> bad background they have had uh, since, uh, you know, the beginning. And the funny thing is that uh, these Mongols, uh, their uh, leaders uh, used to live in Crimea and collect all the taxes from the entire Russian Empire until Peter the Great. Uh, collect all the taxes and bring down to Crimea, Crimea, and they would already decide what to do with all that wealth. Are you, are you talking about the Khazars? The Khazars no, or the Tatars? Tatars. Tatars. Okay, so the Tatars, yeah. 
Hazars are a tribe, also yes. Mongolian tribe, yes. that lived on the east side of Caspian Sea. Yes. And then about uh, 680 something AD, they had decided to uh, to uh, uh, choose a religion. Yeah, yeah, this, this story. Yeah. So they uh, interviewed one Christian, one Islam guy, and, and one, one Jewish. Jewish guy. Yeah. And they so they decided Jewish. the Jewish religion is yeah. the oldest and it uh, fits their needs better. Mm -hmm. So they became uh, Jewish. Jewish. Yeah. So these Khazars, yesterday were Tatars and today they are Jewish. Now, so they expanded all the way north to Russia and they went all the way to West uh, Poland and then to Germany and then all the European countries, all the way to Spain. Uh, I'm not saying this is good or bad, but according to their behavior and, uh, and the habit of collecting a lot of money, eventually all European state governments and kings and queens kicked them out of their countries, all of them. Mm -hmm. The last one was the Spain, 14, 1452, uh, I think. You're talking about kicking out the Cossacks. They were kicked out of yeah. their countries because yeah. they controlled the wealth of their land yep. and their countries. I mean, you're saying they 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 converted to Judaism, but uh, you know they're they're not Israeli. They're not the true. Yeah, they're just they in, just picked the religion. That's in a, yeah. Palestine, yeah, there were Semitic people, Arabs. Mm -hmm. Arabs are Semite people. Yeah, so these people were original uh, Jewish people who uh, accepted created that religion about 1100 BC or so mm -hmm. about. And they uh, followed that religion. They kept it fine. They are Sephardic Jews. Those yes, are the they original are. Arabs. When you say something against the Jews, they call you anti-Semite. Anti Why? Because the original uh, Jews are Arabs. They're Semites. Hmm. Okay? The Khazars are Tatars. So they went all the way through uh, Europe, all the way to Spain, and ended up when they were kicked out of um, Spain, they landed where? In, uh, in Greece, oh. in uh, Saloniki. In Saloniki, they ended up. Yeah. And that's where the Armenians made the huge mistake, brought them from Spain to Saloniki, and then from Saloniki, they became young Turks and so on and so forth, and you know the rest. Yeah. But these are two different groups of yeah. folks yeah. that live in uh, Palestine. And... Um, to finish this uh, idea of uh, Seljuks from the bottom and the uh, Mongols from the top, they behave and they follow the same mentality, the same drive, the same genetic drive that they have had always. Mm -hmm. They can't change. I can never change. I can't become Russian. I can't become uh, Mongolian. You see, I am what I am. Yeah. Uh, this, my, this lifespan for me, whatever I have been planned to be, I will be this. Uh, in the next life, maybe I will come like an American Indian. How do I know? I don't know. Yeah. Whatever your calling is. Your Whatever mission. they send me to do. Yeah. And this time around, they sent me to do he, uh, this and talk. On to, be, to be Hamlet. To be Hamlet and to be or not to be, right? <laughs> yeah. I always say to be. <laughs> that was on point. Uh, yeah. Was anyway. So uh, the, uh, the bottom line is... The Mongols from the north and the Seljuks from the south, they found their solution. In 18, uh, sorry, 1986, July 29th, I'm sitting in Ankara in a restaurant waiting for a waitress to come and serve us. And all of a sudden, there were three of us. All of a sudden, I see a group of people come sit next to us. And I liked their faces, but I didn't know who they are. Mm. And I told my translator, I said, Jenk, do you know who this guy is? I mean, the face is very familiar. He said, you don't know this guy? I said, no, but the familiar face. Because that's uh, Erdal uh, Inunyu, the head of the Socialist Party of uh, Turkey. I said, can I talk to him? Can I meet him, talk to him? I have a couple of questions. This is 1986. He said, of course. He went talk to him. Uh, he's... Uh, 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 ideological head was the uh, editor of the newspaper uh, Gunesh, uh -huh. was sitting next to him. So we met, we talked about 15 20 minutes until waitresses would show up. And uh, I uh, clearly remember the last words. He said, Look, you Armenians are smart people, but you made a huge mistake. <laughs> I said, Which one is that? I know we've done a lot of mistakes, but which one is that? Because 
remember until you brought the Russians in, we were in very good uh, relations and you almost had this whole country. 75, 80% of Turkey was yours, the money, the economy, the yep. uh, sports, culture, everything was yours. Everything. Why did you have to bring the goddamn Russians in? I said, guilty as charged. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whose decision, decision was that. But then I figured it out. I spent another 10 years of studying uh, the British role in it. Oh. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a book, which uh, I forget the name, but um, it talks about um, the British role. And, and um, I mean, it, it's so much, there's so much detail, but I, f I forget the name. Oh, my God. But are, we, are we allowed to say something about the British role? Yeah, you can okay. say whatever you want. No, not whatever I want, but uh, uh, to be politically correct. Just no cussing, that's all. We, yeah. But you can talk about whatever okay. you want. This yeah. is Why? The Queen's dead. Who cares? No, I said no cussing. Long, about the British. Long live the King. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. King. But nobody cares about him. Charles. This is, Charles. This is, in my opinion, mm -hmm. this is what happened after I studied a lot on this subject. In 1878, Russians had an um, agreement with uh, Turkey in San Stefano. So entire Western Armenia was supposed to be under Russian control and they would do some kind of modifications. Mm -hmm. This is 1878? 1878. Okay. Short after that, British government immediately decides to uh, call the Berlin uh, meeting in Berlin, 1878, in August. And one month before that, uh, Britain managed to buy Cyprus for themselves in return for freedom of Turkish Sultan in the eastern part of his country, in Ottoman Empire. Freedom of action. Because uh, all Western countries were, were pushing too much the Turkish Sultan to give the stupid Armenians uh, freedom. Yeah. Uh, equality in human rights and uh, legal rights and this, yeah. uh, to own a land, blah, blah. So th the Russians had promised to do that, but the British government decided to go the other way around. So he brought, British Prime Minister brought four countries into the game, Russia, England, French, and Italy, to be the, the uh, modifiers or controllers of the situation that the Turkey would modify them, um, give Armenians freedom and rights and this and that and that. Uh, mm -hmm. So what happened is the, uh, Britain gave, uh, took the Cyprus, gave Turkey a freedom, Sultan freedom of action in his country and in his mainland, mm -hmm. okay, in Asia Minor. Uh, Sultan was very happy about that in uh, Berlin. So they came to that same question, the Armenian question, mm -hmm. 1878 in, in August, and they brought the Armenian question from San Stefano 16th point to 61 point in Berlin uh, um, Treaty. And at that time, the Armenian question was supposed to be run by four countries instead of one. See, they took away Russians' rights or obligations yeah. to help Armenians. And they gave it supposedly to four different four countries. countries. And stuff. then why am I uh, pinpointing this? When later uh, the head of the uh, British Armenian uh, Friendship Organization would complain to uh, David Lloyd George, the prime minister, why are you doing this? You have signed agreements and treaties, blah, blah. He said, now, look, four countries signed for it, not only us. Yeah. Nobody uh, cared about it and nobody did anything about it. But they did that specifically for one purpose, not to do anything for the Armenians. It's not Hamlet's opinion. British Prime Minister David Lloyd George had a speech in, uh, in um, um, Lord Derry Palat, uh, the, in House, the of House, Lords. House of Lords. House of Lords. Yeah. House of Lords. Yeah. He had a speech there. And then later that speech was published 20 years later in 1938. It was published. I have seen uh, the published copy. Uh, uh, according to the San Stefano Treaty, Armenia was supposed to be under the Russian flag and our Russian protection. 
the sinister intervention of our government and the action of our actions of our the sinister actions of our government is barlabishi sinister uh, intervention of our government led to massacres of 1894 1909 and worst of all the holocaust of armenian people of 1915 david lloyd george not me and he and he used the word holocaust interestingly no. enough oh, well yeah. was genocide there formed was well, no genocide yeah, yeah, or the yeah. word genocide was not formed yet yeah yeah but word it's inter- genocide it's inter- was yeah. invented by lemkin yeah, yes 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 three and then it went to the united nations general assembly in 1946 uh they uh, mm-hmm. discussed that issue and then it was uh Official, put on, officially yes. put on a uh, voting on 1948 mm-hmm. and um that time in 1948 there uh, uh, the prime minister of uh, australia uh, read the resolution uh, unanimous res- uh, resolution passing that genocide word mm-hmm. uh, it was part of the human rights de- declaration so what i'm saying is uh, britain themselves they created this whole thing the main uh, main goal and, and a dream of uh, british government was to create one piece of Turkey today, the way you see it today, and take away all the other parts of the Ottoman Empire, like Middle East, Balkans, Egypt, take it all away, leave the main part. And who is left in the main part in Turkey? Armenians. So they are the only, you know, sacrificial lambs that have to be sacrificed. And then, starts world war one right 1914 so britain wants to go to palestine and wants to go to the baghdad to get the oil fields mm-hmm. and who else wants to get there wilhelm the second wilhelm doesn't have a, a navy he wants to build a railroad so he starts berlin baghdad railroad he goes all the way through europe comes all the way to turkey goes all the way to taurus uh, mountains and then the construction of Taurus Mountain section is given to Swiss uh, engineer. And him and his wife live on a mountain, c- control the uh, construction of the railroad in, through those tunnels in the mountains. And his wife, Swiss nurse, happens to be a smart woman and writes everything what she sees <laughs> in, <laughs> in the woman, huh? Gothic language. So she writes everything and then uh, when the war is over british beat the hell out of the germans then the uh, turks uh, dumped the uh, germans turks uh, dumped germans went all the way to east to fight armenians and uh, uh Wilhelm loses the war british get uh, russia kicks jerusalem yeah. uh, and general allenby walks into jerusalem goes off the horse and walks into jerusalem makes a big gesture and then eventually uh, uh, arabic oil falls under british control mosul and all of that stuff all that good stuff the follow-up of that woman that wrote all what she saw was uh, uh, saved by her and then by her granddaughter until about five years ago five years ago she calls an armenian woman a number one uh, germanologist in the world mm-hmm. armenian woman so dora saka and my professor back in armenia in 1960s so this granddaughter calls her in Montreal, says, Frau Sakayan, I have this. Frau Sakayan flies to Switzerland, gets this document, translates from Gothic into German, and then from German into English, and publishes the books. And I get that book, and I read, and then I fall off my chair. I say, God, I wish I knew this two months before that, before I wrote in my, <laughs> in my uh, study on a British involvement. I have a program in YouTube. It's called <clears throat> Britain and the Armenian Genocide. <clears throat> I spent uh, about ten years reading, but I spent one full year, <clears throat> one full year, excuse me, <clears throat> writing it. You want some water? Yeah, I spent one full year writing. It took me some time. I had to get off my work for almost a year. Wow. Well, um, hope everybody's enjoying this conversation again thanks everybody for joining us live on youtube and facebook um i know we're kind of jumping on f- from one part but the main subject is the mongols and the Seljuks. but it, it it ties in so much with Welcome to every, history 101 yeah it, it ties in with so much that has happened so it's like you know obviously uh, 
you have to talk about this in order to understand this and then from this to that but um let's let's bring it in tight with armenian history and and again why it's so important for people to understand the behavior of the mongols and the seljuks and and kind of bring it to today of what's happening since they have not changed people don't change their philosophies don't change their goals don't change we change our clothes we change our cars sometimes our houses mm -hmm. but if the market's good yeah <laughs> <laughs> but our that's for arno but our mentality and our being our genetic structure doesn't yeah. change yeah your dna doesn't change we are change. what we are and our spirits don't change they came no. with a mission and they're gonna leave so what happened is they have to complete their task and then at that time comes this universal rule of balance i always believe that to every action there is an equal amount of reaction okay that is the my hope that everyone of armenian ethnic origin all everyone who understands this stuff or who wants uh, who likes uh, equality freedom and justice and fairness mm -hmm. will understand you cannot push one direction too much too far to beyond acceptable limits because if you want to live in peace on this planet you can use uh, nuclear weapons you cannot use this uh, <clears throat> missiles that are, um, ukrainians are going to use <coughs> excuse me you cannot go around and killing everybody <laughs> i'm very sorry i have a water problem okay it's drink some water called, it's uh, fine it's cold mm. so eventually we're gonna have to find a common ground mm. to do that <laughs> excuse me you have to f study you have to study the history yeah of course you do of course you do you want to take a break yeah. okay all right guys we're gonna take a quick break um so just give us a second all right All right, everybody, uh, we're, back. we're back. We're back. Sorry about that. Uh, I I apologize. <laughs> I have okay. this so issue. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. You're good. We're all good. Sometimes we need a break. We need some good okay. water. So so we went uh, the, we went all the way uh, through uh, Mongol and uh, Seljuk history, and uh, we came to the point that since the people don't change, their behavior doesn't change. Their yeah. goals don't change. Mm -hmm all these so-called big countries always had the same goals and. Uh, 
uh, inspirations and they always uh, remember about their good uh, conqueror sultan or their good conqueror uh, uh, caesar of course or this uh, and that they always glorifications <laughs> but the bottom line is forget about it this uh, age this day and age that we live in today we have to have learned something from history yeah we have to learn that everything goes around the cycle itself yep. hey uh absolutely there was a good show uh honeymooners years ago i remember i remember that show remember yeah hey uh what's it the friend's name and that uh, skinny guy's name uh, tony or whatever be nice to people on your way up because you're gonna see the same people so on your way down, down. <laughs> yep. this was that his famous uh, line you know yeah. and i always tell this to these politicians hey guys all these big sultans eventually end up being shot dead most of the caesars and sultans are being killed yeah they're all killed <clears throat> because they went too far over their head in uh Sulisian, i don't know if that's correct in english selefkian Yes. they had uh, over 72 or 73 kings killed during their yeah. reign you know in armenia we have it only by army killed by armenians none only one king of armenia was killed by uh, persian yeah. chapu second only one king, king was killed but they say he committed suicide and one king uh, pop was killed by the greeks mm. uh, you know they called them for a party and they had food and drinks and they killed him while he was sitting on his chair so this is all we have had in armenian history kings killed you know but some cultures they just keep killing each other in iran you know how many killed each other how many brothers killed brothers oh yeah we've talked yeah. we've already covered a bunch of it <laughs> yeah. they've had so much treachery and internal internal problems yusuf, if, <laughs> yusuf yeah if this uh england's second young man what's his name andrew oh, oh he, wait the now one. now uh, or and, andrew's the one who's in trouble but henry wait henry no no the second one the younger one who, who married this uh, oh, uh oh, god what's his name uh, not william uh god megan and harry harry if harry lived in 17th century he would have killed his brother <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. i mean more or less that's how they did it you know for power and money they would do anything of course they would but now a little bit in a civilized age and day that we live in we have to uh, think with the same measure about uh, behavior among ourselves about among people among nations we have to come finally to the understanding that all what these politicians are preaching is a big lie of course if you can't lie you don't go into politics no nope. if you go into politics you become a better liar yeah if you can't lie at one point liar. they'll kick you out of course they, they yeah. won't re-elect you no nope. so uh, this is what they do that's why uh, folks the people have to come to the point where they have to start Understa studying and understanding, understanding what's yes going on you know what, what amazes me is i think most of the population now knows that politicians are liars everything they say is a lie and yet we continue to I, there, there's still a smidgen of a population that still believes that these people are but at out this... for, out for the greater good i i know people i'm just gonna leave it there let me impossible to speak to but again i'm not going to get into that but to, his, to me, hamlet's point let me bring you a quote from the very famous wonderful russian poet alexander pushkin mm -hmm. he said to the truth of the uh, darkness of the, uh, the to the um, darkness of the truth to mm -hmm. the darkness of the truth we prefer the uplifting lie <laughs> wow pushkin to the so true darkness of the truth we prefer the uplifting lie mm -hmm. in russian in russian or whoever understands it sounds better in russian <laughs> yeah. so, of course now, um let's go back to our uh, situation here now we have to the, why i'm doing this all telling my people my uh, compatriots or my friends whoever wants to listen look you have to educate yourself number one you just have to start from yourself first yeah. if you 
bring yourself up a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a bit more. Then you understand what's going on around you. Then you are in better relationship with everybody else. Then you understand their problems. Then you can live in a more peaceful and understanding yeah. uh, surroundings and uh, environment. But the the worst enemy of the human being is the absence of education. Is the uh, Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. ignorance ignorance is the worst enemy of the human of of humankind yep. yeah that's why we have to understand everything get to know what happened and find a solution hey look by killing each other with a missile or with a machine gun or a nuclear weapon is the same thing i mean look, why They're are you killing each other <laughs> <laughs> why why you want to destroy yourselves hey mr putin why you want to destroy yourself and everybody else around you yeah why uh, your billions of dollars was not enough for you what how much more do you he, want he listens to this show by the way by the way <laughs> by the way uh, another uh, pushkin's uh, poem there is a story about how the men all the men goes to work and to the lake and f- catches a fish comes home gives it to the wife and then wife gets more ignorant and he get, she gets more um, greedy and she wants more and more and she she wants a house and then she <clears throat> the voice uh, i lost the voice I you can't hear voice. yourself you no. have it? Uh, i think it might be uh from hold on a second here let me see that headphone. okay i'll I'll speak that way okay yeah okay no, i okay. i disconnected myself it's so, okay then this, i do that all the time yeah then this woman <laughs> wants a house then she wants a palace and then uh, uh, eventually she wants to be a queen and then eventually she wants to be queen of the ocean and then this poor fish keeps uh, you know, granting uh, the, granting whatever yeah. this woman wants and then eventually this woman i mean this fish gets really disgusted this golden fish yeah. you know mm-hmm. what's good the nickname yeah what's good yeah. tells the man go home go home he comes home and this is his old wife with the old house with the broken bucket well <laughs> she's <laughs> something it's that's why that golden uh yeah golden isn't there the cartoon story. of that in russian sure. yeah, they, yeah i remember seeing that in Armenia. that's so. the uh explanation of uh greed yeah that's yeah. greed always kills listen girl. everybody has greed in them it's it's part of human nature and yeah. and, and it's how you become addicted to greed um it, it's very it's a very um people get drunk with greed and sometimes you can't blame them because when somebody has never seen um that kind of wealth and all of a sudden is showered with it they don't know how to handle it so what they do is they automatically start um spending that wealth like like you know it, it's um it's going to end soon mm-hmm. instead of thinking to spend it wisely or invest it reinvest it or whatever share it and then what happens is um they see it start trickling down so now they get even more greedy so they try to uh in any means in any way to gain more and more and more just like that queen you know that wasn't enough like the house wasn't enough that wasn't enough now she wanted the palace then she wanted to have the ocean to herself and it's the same thing it's just people get drunk with greed and get lost in it and it's unfortunate and it can happen to any one of us unless you know what you are doing what you want what's your purpose of your life how much is enough you have to but that comes from education exactly what i was saying is the ignorance is your number one enemy yeah and uh, that's why we keep spending time and years and accumulating all the good and bad information yeah. try to put it out for the people they work they don't have the time and uh, an uh, opportunity to read yeah. all this stuff yeah uh, the material that i have covered uh, it took 45 years let's say even not yeah. not everybody can uh sacrifice 45 no, years yeah of course but i i also think the biggest problem is that we don't uh uh in in any education system um the history is not ta- history should be taught from a very early age because uh and i'm talking about just our, not armenian history just world history yeah and uh what that does is uh, history is uh the the lessons from where you learn okay well they already did this it didn't work So now you know that hey let's not do this because they, these people tried it already it didn't work let's try a new system let's make it better but that's not taught anymore mm-hmm. and and it's unfortunate like kids are becoming dumber and dumber they might you know they might have a let's say they they want to be doctor or lawyer so they follow those certain um 
education and, and continue with that through university, this and that, but that's all they know. They don't know anything else, you know? So even if when they're lawyers or doctors or whatever, they have no idea anything about history and how to be a good human and make the right decisions because the, that I believe by, by knowing history, it helps you make better decisions in life. It could be the <clears throat> smallest thing. When I started um, getting more um, like interested in history, I am not a historian, by the way. Uh, by yeah. vocation, I am uh, just a researcher. Uh, uh, no, I graduated from Armenia State University uh, as a researcher. No, uh, as, a, as, a, <laughs> as a teacher of German and Russian languages. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I forgot a long time ago. Or, yeah. You know, it, 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 but, it, uh, or, or, uh, sir, go ahead. it sparks your analytical side. Mm -hmm. It really does. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things that happen in history that are cyclical. We've already covered this. Yeah. When you start thinking about the type of conquests in the past, even in the distant past, mm -hmm. whether in the near past or distant past, you start seeing so many similarities to what's going on today. Mm -hmm. If you're following even this much of politics, yeah, even this much of politics, there's something, some story out there, 100 years ago, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, that's almost the same exact thing someone mm -hmm. else did to someone else. Yeah. Whatever part of the world. Maybe slightly different. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah. but it's the same thing, maybe with a little lemon twist, maybe yeah. a little orange twist, whatever the case is. But that's you know? the same. I mean, again, uh, that's the same thing. If 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 you're, you know, when, when we started making mm -hmm. this, there was different versions of this, right? So yes. it, it's the, like you said, it's a cycle, right? You try this version. It didn't it work. It evolves. It evolves. It yeah. evolves. Same thing. The, the history evolves. And it seems like it's the same thing, which in 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 theory it is the same thing, but it's always slightly sure. I mean, with a twist. I think that's just human nature till we get it right. Yes, because um, we learn more and more and more. Yeah. We try yeah. better, better ways, yeah. and uh, our experience um, helps us to improve. But there, it's, there you go. But if now this generation is not taught that mm -hmm. history of the trials and errors and the wars and everything, then they don't know. They're blind. They're blind. Okay, let go. me tell you what uh, I was start. I started to say why I uh, got interested in history uh, years ago when I wanted to know who the Sumerians are, mm -hmm. and then we discovered that uh, there is no such a nation as Sumerians. They never called themselves Sumerians. There is a people who uh, migrated out of Armenia through those rivers, Euphrates and Tigris, all the way south, to cultivate agriculture. Yeah, and that's where their uh, Civilization rose, so-called Sumerian civilization of Mesopotamia. And I don't know who gave that information to them. I have my own opinion, of course, but let's say we don't know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it, they have left hundreds and hundreds of um, manuscripts on a, on a clay, clay tablets. Yes. And when uh, 150 years ago uh, they were discovered, this uh, manuscript, I'm calling it manuscript, but it's... Uh, Scripts on clay, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, petrified. Oh, when the scientists read them, uh, most of them they were able to publish. So there are a lot of books about the Sumerian culture. Mm -hmm. So when I read one of those books, and a very famous um, American Sumeriologist um, uh, Samuel Noah Kramer had one book, Sumerians, uh, and I'm reading through the phrases and uh, proverbs what they have used and what they have said and uh, what kind of mentality they had yeah and one of them says whatever happened in the past is going to happen in the future mm -hmm. whatever will happen in the future has already happened, happened in the past, in the past. Yeah. so when you read this these people wrote this about four thousand years ago for yeah. god's sake yeah. don't you have enough brains as much as that guy had 4,000 yeah. years ago, you know? Yeah, sometimes I think it's, it's all a cycle. Like they were smarter than us. There's also an ultimate, it was given. There's an ultimate agenda right now with what's happening in the world, mm -hmm. um, you know, with people and education and just dumbifying people as to the lowest, uh, uh, you know, to the lowest uh, level of There's... ignorance as possible, which is these TikToks and... and instagrams and people sitting there and just going like this all day long not even they don't know, write. They, they don't they, they, they have no they idea what's going to, they, they don't read they don't read uh i mean i i i'm trying to figure out whatever time i can to read 
obviously busy life. But again, people need to take time and read. My son uh, has two daughters and uh, older one is four years old. The younger one is six months. Yeah. So this older one, four, month, uh, four years old, is uh, uh, learning on a board to read, write, and do math. Yeah. And when she does that, she entertains to her younger sister. Yeah. And she makes a fun of herself. And, and this younger one, six months old one, is having a fun of her lifetime. Yeah. I mean, two sisters are entertaining each other. At the same time, they are reading and doing math. My son <laughs> sent me the picture. I was shocked. Yeah. I mean, this is the way you teach yeah. your kids, you know. Otherwise, they will become like those uh, yeah. bums yeah. out there. Yeah. 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 But the, uh, back to our um, history part is... You don't have to be historian to know these important things, the events no, that have happened in the past. It's only for your favor. If you are a politician, if you are a diplomat, if you don't know the diplomat before you, what mistakes yeah. he made, how are you going to become than, a better yeah. one? How, how are you going to uh, avoid the problems? Yeah. How are you going to avoid them? In old Greece, when uh, they decided to send, let's say, a particular diplomat to um, uh, negotiate with the uh, uh, Persians at that time it was Greek Persian wars going on they would send the most uh, wealthy guy the most education um, uh, the guy had no connections with any political organizations or ties with anyone independent guy independent thinker wealthy not bribable yeah uneducated that's the, the, the diplomat the ambassador to go to deal with Persians. Otherwise, the, the Persians would eat him alive. Yeah. Un unbribable, huh? Unbribable. Unbribable. That's that's a term that don't, doesn't apply to too many of them, though. Today? No, well, not. Well, I mean, today, nobody. Nobody's unbribable. Uh, no, nobody's unbribable. <laughs> everybody so, has a every, price. Everybody has a price today. Yeah. You ask a. Uh, but back kid, then, not too many of them. Even back then, not too many of them. You Very ask, few. You, know, you ask a kid, uh, do this for me, and they go say, no. What am I gonna have? What am I gonna? Have? What's, what's they say? No, they'll from they'll say no. You give them ten bucks, they'll do it for you. It, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, how do we? Uh, you know, the idea was to tie this to yes. what's happening yes. currently right now, yes. and everything. Like I said, the biggest thing is this hatred from the um, the Turkic culture yes. towards Armenians. So let's talk about that a little bit okay. um, before we okay. end the show, basically. Okay. Uh, let me give you a few words about this uh, Ilham Aliyev guy. Yeah. I have no doubt that the, if this guy was not disinformed or misinformed by big politicians, mm -hmm. he would have been a, just like another Azeri guy, another Azeri leader. His father was much better than him yeah. in these many aspects. No, can I ask you a question about him? Mm -hmm. We've all heard that he's somewhat, I think you and I have even talked about this. He's an educated guy. That's what we've heard. Supposedly. Or supposedly, right? Now, with any of the education that he has, he's obviously known, he knows about certain truths, about geography, about the way things were laid out. His people didn't exist before mm -hmm. a certain time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. His job as a, a politician is to withhold that information from his tribes mm -hmm. to keep ultimate control create a new history yes so this is this is what he's doing an excellent job of yeah but uh, i mean you say the lie you know, has only 40 days <laughs> you, okay, yeah sure you can lie people to a certain point certain amount of time until some bigger guy comes along and choose you for lunch I mean, you cannot constantly do the lie. You can't. But Impossible. Ten, but 10 million of his people, of his followers, uh, they, believe... They're, they're not 10 million. Or, uh, or, don't, or close don't to forget it. that uh, today's so-called Azerbaijan uh, includes um, two, three different tri I think, uh, tribes. The, yeah, the, yeah, the groups. Yeah, yeah. Talish, Lesgi, this and that, mm -hmm. the Iranian origin people a lot. Yeah. So he's... Uh, people who have uh, Tatar or uh, Mongolian origin are very small group. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, among those, half are, are Islam, half are Jewish. I mean, his wife is from another tribe. Yeah, I've heard I about mean, that too. There's a lot of yeah. internal yeah. Uh, problems in there. 
the minute that something serious happens in that country, it's going to collapse on its under its own weight. That I agree. Yeah, because it's based off of. A I lot think of it's coming. I think it's, I, information. Let, let me say this: yeah. in 1983, I wrote an article. In 83, I wrote an article and sent one copy to the Armenian paper, one copy to Russian paper. How the Soviet Union was going to collapse and when, and it happened exactly the way I wrote it. And based on that article, I was invited to work for some American organization. I don't want to name the name, but they wouldn't believe that it was possible. I said, "Yes, it's going to happen." Why? Because of the facts that yeah. I lay out in front yeah. of you. What do you mean it can't happen? It will happen. The same thing, the same formula Applies works to them. every time yeah. when you push too far and your foundation is, uh, like a French call it, the Chateau de Sable. And uh, on a sand you create a, a, a chateau, yeah. it's going to wash sink. away. Yeah. It's going to wash away. Mm -hmm. the, any castle is strong only if it's built on heavy rocks on a solid ground and the solid ground in history is the truth yeah. if you create a lie and then a bigger lie and then of a bigger course, bigger absolutely. bigger lie and then eventually that uh, hey, that weight is gonna crash on you because there's no why, foundation that's why putin is gonna go he can't continue on with this kind of a lie he's killing with russian soldiers he's killing another russian soldier why are you killing russian soldiers with russian soldiers what is, what is this insanity for money and control are you an idiot? And then all the historical facts, when you look at every war was lost because of the absence of actual ideological goal, actual reality, mm -hmm. the true reality. If it's uh, to conquer and kill, you won't succeed. It's going to end up in crash and burn. Like the Hitler's ideas, like many of these uh, conquerors' ideas, don't work because they are based on uh, conquering, killing, robbing, stealing. It does not last yeah. because another crook that is stronger than you comes along and kills you. Yeah. Dog eat dog, right? No, well, that's it. So, so based off of that, let's say, how long do you think Aliyev or his predecessors can maintain this? Uh, this this let's, uh, lie lack, for a better term lie let's 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 use that term loosely as long as uh, west is taking aliyev's oil yeah and russian oil through azadi pipeline mm -hmm. they're gonna cup, uh, close their eyes for a while mm -hmm. until they figure out where else to get their oil supplies and then naturally, so it's uh, all you, about have to, you have to understand when a hundred years ago uh, in Baku, people would pick up the oil f with buckets from the top of the water. They would pick up with buckets. That's how uh, much it was and how abundant they had uh, oil on the ground. Yeah. Now they have to dig 200 meters. That's how far they have to go. In other words, it's getting less and less and getting more and more expensive to dig it out. And if the West puts the price of forty dollars per barrel on Russia and on Ilham, it's gonna get harder and more expensive, and eventually they'll play a game with them. So the West plans for twenty, forty, fifty years yeah. in advance. I am absolutely sure the West has plans for Putin's successors and for Aliyev's successors. Oh, sure, absolutely. These people, these plans. people never think three four years ahead it's they think 20 50 oh, yeah. years forward absolutely and eventually when these people will expire and their job and their goals will burn out and run out of steam they will go and uh, they will create a new type of uh, like they went to afghanistan you know americans have fought in uh, vietnam for 20 years but 10 of the uh, 10 years uh, vietnamese war, for, uh, fought themselves another 10 years american army went there yeah after 20 years they left now they're friends with Vietnam. And then they left the uh, Arabic countries. So they slowly become friends with Arabs. And then they're going to leave uh, Afghanistan, like right? they left Afghanistan. Yeah. They're going to become uh, friends with Afghanistan. Course, sure. And this is a game that's going on yeah. all the time. Cyclical. There no, it's there all are, cyclical. There are no enemies forever in uh, uh, in uh, politics, you know? Yeah. So that's why uh, I'm uh, hoping that the Armenian uh, folks all over the world, in Armenia and diaspora, will understand that whatever has happened until now 
it has to be a good lesson for us to learn not to make the same mistakes again yeah and uh, get unified and stop internal fighting stop in the fight that uh, only helps the enemy of course i mean that's it's again that's a part of history how the, many times have it, we have we you know learned when it, you have internal battles they will jump on you that's it they'll take advantage of it the, the great um, countries and uh, empires have collapsed as a as a result of the internal internal um, the house absolutely. collapses from inside yes. it's even in the bible yep yeah. absolutely so we hope that the armenians will learn the lesson the uh, uh, mongol central cooperation has become very obvious now very obvious even folks on the street now understand what's going on but uh, thank god after 300 years they they will they will see and understand which way they have to take yeah, yeah. they have to you know you gotta um, concentrate and think about your own uh, safety are you following the chat something's going on with yeah. our system here i can't see the last thing we saw like for some reason our stuff isn't so i don't know if people are asking questions or not no, uh, they're, they're conversation amongst themselves oh, okay well which is, that's which, is good. Kind of, which is kind of cool yeah uh if you guys have any questions for hamlet regarding this topic that we're talking about please go ahead and uh ask away and mike is uh following yeah. that uh before we uh end this episode so um I don't know what they're talking about. Are you yeah, following they're, it? Yeah, they're they're going. They're having a no, <laughs> This is awesome. They're having a great conversation okay. amongst each other. Yeah, that's good. Um, well, I mean, we're, we're hopeful. Like you said, we're hopeful that um, uh, Armenians get smarter and start making better decisions. Our, our government hopefully get some starts better leaders. In yeah, there. we need we need better leaders um, to to almost feels like a headless to chicken. play the long game rather than the short game. I think that's the other biggest problem um and and part of it has to do with greed take the money out of the equation then you will win yeah yeah it's it's unfortunate um any, any we, questions we got, we got nothing no we got nothing nope. nobody has a question nope. all right <laughs> no um anything else you want to mention no i no. want to thank you for the opportunity to yeah. speak with you and uh, your followers this is yeah, I love listening to him. He's, yeah. he's one of well, our well, many I mean, guests. Like I said, I was going to be regular on our show, and then we just need to pick a topic next one. This one, you know, we wanted to... Anna, to, Anna just said, Hamlet, please post more videos on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the suggestion. I would love to do that. But the problem is to put something on a video, you have, I have to sit down. I have to study the subject. I have to yeah. read it. Uh, I just... Uh, did a program yesterday with the uh, US Armenia about the about the uh, Tomar and New Year. Uh -huh. This is something that I'm going to read yeah. and put in a uh, YouTube. Yeah. This to give the people um, an idea what Tomar yeah. is, what uh, yeah. New Year is and yeah. all the astronomical uh, 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 That's an interesting topic. I mean, it is so interesting yeah. that oh, thank you. Uh, even uh, like I said, my friends didn't know anything about this because uh, nobody ever uh, comes to that and uh, yeah. they don't discuss these kind of subjects and until somebody sits down and digs in uh, books for... Yeah. Anyway, uh, I promise you this uh, Tomar and uh, New Year, Navasart will be next. Okay. Will be next. We just had uh, Gamer is asking, um, can you ask Hamlet about Cappadocia and its connection to Gyumri and Sumer? Is that Gamer or Gamer? Ga Gamer. <laughs> Gamer? Okay. No, it's not Gamer, bro. <laughs> no Gamer, K. <laughs> Cappadocia is, uh, how can I say it? It's uh, a name that that ter territory, that part of Armenia, mm -hmm. it's a small Armenia. It's yeah. a, a, a poker hike now. Uh, that's uh, right in the middle of today's Turkey. Pretty amazing looking area. Uh, yeah, it's nice. So, you know, old um, rocks that have been carved in and the people have lived in those yeah, caves. In the, in the caves. When yeah. we were in Cappadocia in 1985, uh, at that time recently was discovered something that I want to bring up to attention of our viewer. They found a city under the ground. Later on, they found another one somewhere else. But they just opened this uh, round opening to move the rug mm -hmm. roll mm -hmm. and we moved in seven stories Inside, circular, yeah. circular stairways yeah, down. there's there's caves underneath that people lived in and uh, mm -hmm. a translator and a guide tried to say oh during the middle ages when uh, uh, enemies attacked uh, the folks here people who used to live here would go underground and 
just save themselves. I said, yeah, but you got to understand that that is maybe 11, 12, 13, 14 centuries. But this damn thing was built maybe five, ten yeah, thousand years that, ago. Absolutely, yeah, it was. Yeah. And when you go down so many stores down, and then you see a huge worship area, mm-hmm. a temple, copy of today's Catholic Church. Come on. Thousands of years ago. Wow. With an altar and everything. Uh, everything. Yeah. So uh, uh, Kapatovka used to be populated with uh, very, very intelligent people for a long, long time. Uh, what else can I say? The uh, connection with Kapatovka with what? Uh, Sumer. Sumer is the uh, Mesopotamia between um, Tigris and uh, uh, Euphrates. And folks uh, who lived in Upper Armenia, uh, Metzhaik, mm-hmm. who lived there in Ararat Valley and all that, they went down uh, these two rivers because after a certain time, about uh, five, six thousand years ago, the waters receded from the, from Armenian yeah. highland, went yeah. down to the Persian Gulf. Uh, it's a different sto- a long story how, why the waters would go down. And when the water went down, the dirt was fertile and they went down for agriculture. And that's when some gods went down and they gave them all this information that these people contained or or, or uh, obtained. Uh, There is a word in Jewish, in in Hebrew, nifelim. Nifelim is the the guys who came came down from up above. I mean, come on. Fallen angels. And they're not fallen well, no, just, they're from the fall. They just landed on a uh, Well, you know, um, I don't know if you've seen uh, that. I've studied uh, the that, Nephilim. The, the, that new um, doc, uh, docu-series, call it, with, um, what's his name? Graham, Graham, Graham Hancock. Graham Hancock on Netflix, which is called Ancient... Ancient Aliens? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Apoc- uh, ancient he Apolo- was, he was Apocalypse. In, he was the, yeah, he, Ancient he Apocalypse. In ancient and aliens. it's on Netflix and... Um, it, it, it's very interesting. I think you should watch it. it and it talks about, and Gobekli Tepe is in the episode. He covers that as well. And, you know, what what he's talking about is basically that all the uh, civilizations 12,000 years ago mm-hmm. had the same story of a, this great flood, mm-hmm. all of them. And all of them had the same story that these great big creatures, creature like godlike people came and give them gave them this wisdom of how to, you know, for agriculture and domestication and all this stuff. Um, so it's very interesting. And they're starting to realize that there was this different race before ours, w- mm-hmm. which was had this technology um, and they were able to build these things. Yep. Um, so uh, and I think that's that's really threatening current academia and historians and they're they're panicking. So this is Graham Hancock. Yeah. Uh, every uh, year, t- I wouldn't say every year, but every other year, I try to um, uh, yeah. uh, connect with uh, this organization uh, that... Uh, Can we get him on the show? That, uh, they, <laughs> that they, <laughs> that you, you imagine? Before, the, before uh, the, what they used to do is uh, three, 4,000 people would connect, uh, co- yeah. collect themselves in a high desert, yeah. and uh, they would uh, have about 20 or... or 25 maybe speakers who would speak on the different subjects on all civilizations, lost civilizations, uh, ancient, uh, unexplainable phenomena and all of that. Everybody had something yeah. to talk about, you know, and then you run from one lecture to another lecture and then to another lecture. And this way you would maybe make it uh, 10 to 12. Yeah. More, more than that, you wouldn't be able to digest. But uh, two years ago, they did it online. Yeah. So uh, all the speakers uh, recorded their subjects including Graham Michael, including all the other, uh, Robert Boal and yeah. many others. What they did is they recorded all their stuff and they put it online. And you could sit home on your couch, on your laptop and watch all of them. It, they, uh, the organizer gave us two weeks, but she gave me one month <laughs> to, uh, to just digest all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, this is a funny story. You know, I was uh, trying to connect with my... Uh, internet uh, with my email to my laptop I, I was having a hard time and then uh, i started like armenian every other when you would, would uh, complain right i said victoria what's the matter with this you have connected everybody else except me mine is not connecting is that because i'm armenian that's why he's not connecting <laughs> <laughs> she laughed she says how i said you don't like us yes. she goes how could i not like you my husband is Armenian. Oh, wow. I said, come on, give me a break, uh, Victoria. That I wouldn't expect. I was just joking, yeah. you know? I said, don't tell me that he's behind all of this, what you're doing. She said, yeah, he is. Wow. 
Oh. I said, what is he, from uh, Beirut or something? He said, no, he's from Armenia. That's a story. Wow. She but, said, because you're Armenian, I give you one month. But I got to <laughs> since, since you've met Graham Hancock, and, yeah. and this is something, you know, the <laughs> next thing I was going to say is like, he does not give us credit. He does not give Armenia for uh, Gobekli Tepe. Oh, you know. he, 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 three years ago, he was in Armenia for the third time. And last time I met with him, I said, Mr. Hancock, uh, why did you go to Armenia again? He goes, hey, listen, you don't know. You have the cradle of civilization in, in your country. I said, so why, why doesn't he talk yeah, about it in this stuff? stuff? Last book he did. Last, well, latest book. Public. How many people read books? That's the problem. He, I want publicly, him publicly. He, publicly, he, publicly, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't publicly. It's it's like it's he did know, the whole. It's not just him. There's a lot of them that do. Sorry to cut you off. Really, a lot of them do the same thing. Is they'll speak in front of a certain audience a particular way, and then they'll speak a particular way in front of another particular audience. Have you heard the word called academia? Of course. Yeah. Now, uh, next time I meet him this summer, it's going to be another uh, seminar. So like this. I want you to, but, if you do meet him, squeeze on him. Ask him on my behalf. Yes. Yeah from you ask him you did that episode about gobekli tepe portasar and you know that that is armenia armenians it is built by armenians and yet you did not mention one thing about armenia you kept talking about modern day turkey modern day turkey okay well it's modern day turkey the term yeah modern 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 day day, modern day modern why don't you say armenian highlands why did he not mention it 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 pissed me off so much and i'm a fan of his and i'm a fan of his ideas and i like the fact that he's challenging history and the the bs way that history has been written so if you get a chance and honestly i'm gonna email him i'm gonna i know we're a little show where nobody's but i'm gonna try to see if he he'll join us on video for 10 minutes go this way say look mr Hancock, i heard that you have been in armenia recently and you have publicly admitted that all of that stuff is in armenia armenia major yeah and you have admitted that uh and i heard also that you have mentioned that in your book are you going to do that publicly somewhere somehow yeah yeah no no i'm gonna reach out to him yeah very diplomatic and i'm sure he's gonna do that in the next uh, gathering we have next june uh probably uh, victoria the organizer said hamlet sign up for early bird it will be cheaper (laughs) yeah okay that's cool that's cool you get you would get to attend some of these things with some of those people yeah very cool robert boval uh, is a, a very strong uh, egyptologist very strong he's an architect by profession uh when i was talking to him i said mr boval i want something from you he goes each courses in <laughs> armenian you know <laughs> I said, wait a minute you speak armenian too I grew up in Armenian neighborhood in Alexandria. What are you talking about? <laughs> All my friends are Armenian. Well, <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, now that we know, now, now that we know that Messi has Armenian roots. Oh did, God! Did see that? <laughs> I heard about it, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. There apparently he talked about it publicly that his mom's side. Again, I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, apparently his mom's side uh, escaped the genocide and went to Italy. Uh-huh. And then from Italy, uh, obviously they got simulated, and uh, and then from there they went to Argentina. But he's he's like, I have Armenian friends, uh, you know, many of them. I I don't know much about the Armenian culture, but apparently his roots from his mom's side are Armenian. So claim him. Yeah. <laughs> the greatest, it's greatest, one of the greatest song of yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bring him to play for Armenia. Yeah. No, at least bring at him least. to coach Armenia. To coach. To coach Armenia. But, now, that would be amazing. Yeah. Look, that would uh, take the last, entire GDP of the yeah. country. Last, yeah. If I may ask a question now, I ask a question to you. What do you think Sunday? Mumba, uh, Mbappe or Messi? Okay, so, 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 so let's put it this way. Question. I'm a big fan of Mbappe. Okay, yeah. I think he's what twenty three years old. This yes. kid has an amazing Unbelievable. future. Unbelievable. 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 Yeah. So, so for 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 that reason, I I I again him as a player. I'm not a fan of France, but I'm a fan of him as a player. Um, but it's Argentina. I need our Messi. Messi, yeah, Messi think, deserves it. Argentina deserves it. So I think I think, I think I think Messi wins, and I hope he does. I think it's going to be a very uh, there's two things. What I'm afraid of is it being a boring game, but I don't think it's going to be boring. No, I think it's going to be boring. And Messi and Mbappe play together, obviously, at uh, you know, PSG. PSG. So yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be they a great going, game. They are going to show themselves off to oh, the yeah. world. Yeah. The, uh, the only uh, advantage yeah. the uh, Argentina has 
in a number of many players who have very high technical abilities. Yeah. That, that when you compare the players, the rest mm-hmm. of the team, yeah. put yeah. the Messi and about by out, the rest nine, let's say, among them, I would say you know, five have more advantage than the others in the yeah. technical abilities. It, and it, in thinking, Argentina. Argentina. Yeah. Yeah. Argentina are stronger uh, yeah. players. Yeah. And that w- gives me, in my mind, gives me a little uh, positive, like 60-40 yeah. to Argentina. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Argentina wins yeah. this. I, I'm just... It's 7 a.m. I, mean, I, 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 I call it the I call it the law of averages. You know, Fran- what, France, France already won the World Cup. Messi lost one in 2014. Just, it's got to yeah. happen. It's so I feel like it's written. What that Messi really, has to really bothering me is like you know they had games at eleven a.m. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why wouldn't you put? It, why wouldn't you uh, put this one at eleven? Why seven a.m.? Well, like, it's seven a.m. here. You're, you're, it's but, the, uh, but see, you're getting but with seven a.m. You're getting a proper time on Sunday in the European market, and you're getting a morning time in the Western market, right? Don't forget. And then you have South America, mm-hmm. which is three four hours ahead. So you're getting a 10 a.m. start 11 so yeah think about think about the timing and what markets you're getting a bigger share with i don't care <laughs> 11 o'clock was uh, done for purpose to be late in the evening yeah yeah, yeah. i mean yeah, that was heat. really late already i yeah. think they were playing into like midnight sometimes I mean, passed into the next the day yeah for yeah. the heat yeah, yeah. so yeah. Well, anyway. Helmut John, uh, thank you so much for I today pleasure. uh we'll have you back and talk about a more uh, another historical point. topic that you know you, you've you've we read could, about we could talk about this subject which is very interesting you know how the um, old uh, nations armenians and romans and how did they uh, uh, count or calculate their time their yeah years, oh i like their yeah. Yeah. Sound, yeah. and how the uh, globe is turning uh, okay. in a particular way and how people made mistakes in calculating the uh, speed of the okay. earth and okay. Okay. maybe uh sometime in uh, either Late January, January February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, it's a subject. Yeah, it is. It's a very interesting topic. Well, we won't see you till then. So I want to wish you happy holidays. Um, uh, happy New Year. Thank it, you. You know, your family. Hopefully, we wish you health to yes. you, to your family, and uh, happy Armenian Christmas at the same time. Uh, all that good jazz. <laughs> so. Uh, I want to thank everybody who has joined us live and the great discussion that's yeah, happening guys, in the chat. You thank you so awesome much, guys. Tonight. That's awesome. And thank you for all the questions. Um, and uh, I want to mention that next uh, Thursday we'll be live uh, at 7 p.m., half an hour early. Yeah. And with us is going to be archaeologist Mikhail Badalian, who will be joining us live from Yerevan. And we will be discussing the secrets of the Erebuni Fortress. He has he is one of the men who did the digs over there. He is actually head of the Erebuni um Erebuni something department, I guess archaeological department. He's the head. He's actually done a lot of digs at um uh, at the fortress. Uh, fortress and also Urartu. He, mm-hmm. But we're gonna cover Erebuni and then we'll have him back on to talk about Urartu. I mean Urartu is such a fascinating uh you know topic, but Yeah, he'll be with us next Thursday. Again, it's going to be 7 p.m., so uh, we'll remind everybody, but it's going to be an earlier show because it's going to be 7 a.m. over there, and he's going to join us. Good. Um, That's a good good subject and uh, interesting for me also. I grew up there. I mean, it was my town. I was a little boy. Yeah. We were running around in the area where Piotrowski was digging over there. Yeah. Wow. So talk about memories, right? <laughs> um, anything you want to plug? Anything coming up or any interesting stuff? You said you have the show on US Armenia, right? I did. Uh, they're going to show it uh, this. Uh, they're going to broadcast this Saturday at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. All right. So those of you who are in the States, uh, uh, he will be on the US Armenia, 7 p.m. Pacific Coast Standard Time. Uh, make sure to watch it. And again, you covered about the Nawasar. The, Nawasar, the, the New Year. New Year. And all. The calendar. Inter- yeah, interesting. Interesting topic. Okay um besides that follow us on instagram make sure you guys find uh, us on telegram i guess yeah we're i guess yeah try telegram. telegram it's uh just type in medhelos med- med- podcast po- yeah you got to put the podcast well, in there, huh? because there's a lot of medhelos out there apparently uh-huh. <laughs> telegram all the time yeah um uh, Again, guys, the the sculptures are available if you want to purchase them go to medhelos.com use that promo code holidays and you'll get 20% off uh the nujdes are at pre-order um all the hat we have the hats now so yep. get those hats 
Uh, follow us on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, please share with your friends. Uh, let everybody know about this podcast. We need to grow it as much as possible. Again, uh, YouTube is our concentration now as far as video goes because that's the best platform to be on. So we want to get the subscribers up. Uh, we officially hit 25,000 listeners on the podcast platform, which is amazing. Thank you to everybody who's downloading and listening. Uh, we really appreciate it. So... Um, as we always say at the end of the show, um, love one another. Wait, 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 hold on. You cut? No, no you jumped. No. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just go on. Dude. All right. Well, uh, as like I said, as we always say, respect one another, love one another, and until the next episode, take care of yourselves.